All right, my man. What's up? Corey Creed. Hey, um, so pull this up a bit and keep it like, yeah, you feel like, it feels weird, but trust me, it works better. Yeah, happy? Hit, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. Pumped. I'm chuffed. I'm, I'm stoked to hear. I'm hey. stoked we made this happen. Yeah, I'm back. Well, the last time I spoke to you was Oz X. Was it that long ago? Mm. Surely not. Nah, it was. Really? Was yeah. that the last time I've seen you? I reckon. Nah, when was it, Mick? I know. Oh it's no, before. sorry, Supercross. Paralyzed. Yes. Uh, yeah, Paradise. I mean, uh, Blue Water Bug. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, but I didn't really see anyone there though. Like, cause nah, we were you doing were, the couch thing. We were busy. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, over that. Out. yeah that was, that was <clears> full on. Um, so yeah, life has been good for you, mate. Eh? Yeah, hectic since then. Anyway, I was kind of last time I seen you. I was just getting ready, kind of just training, riding, doing as much as I possibly could. Yeah, because I'd invested so much into myself. So I was just trying to pretty much put everything on the table and then if I, as soon as i went away i was good and if i lost i was good too because yeah. i gave it everything so yeah. yeah i was pinned that me and sam was just talking about this before like it seems like you just not like went in with like an ace in the hole but it's like the dudes that you were competing against just didn't do what you did in the lead up to this x games because like you were there last year and you had a pretty solid crack but it's like this year was like this full year to fully prepare and it's like you pretty much treated yourself like a factory quarter pipe rider right pretty much like since x game sydney when that was my first one first kind of x games i rode down and got second and then ever since then all the way to minneapolis i just rode quarter pipe built my quarter pipe rode it and then i was like i'd watch everyone who i was competing against i'd watch them every night sit there see what they were doing and no one was doing anything. Like the week before in Minneapolis, I was starting to ride like Colby and Axel. They did a full, not Axel, but Berriman. They all did a few jumps and then they were just at X Games. And I had like six months of just, I'd ride twice a week, two solid days and then go back to work. It's crazy like that you just, like could you see though in your head that like if I do this, like I could really just completely take this whole sport over from the jump? Yeah, well I just wanted to win. I just wanted the gold medal. You know, it's just like when you're growing up as a kid or you watch like Reed and everyone racing there, just like that number one plate or the championship. For me, it was just the medal. Yeah. And being there, riding in that stadium and just winning. So I just, I, I was just feeding off that. Yeah, it's so like, I just think it's so, like it's so ballsy and it's so smart on your behalf. Like Sam was saying, that you didn't even do what everyone else does and get a bike over there and put a pipe and shit on it. You literally crated up your bike that you rode here yeah. and you took it over. So it's like, it, did you just get that obsessive level of like focus to make these wins happen? Well, quarter pipe, it's not just about bolting a pipe on anymore. Quarter pipe's horsepower, um, weight reduction to go high. The highest, you, the, the faster the bike is, the higher you can go. Yeah. So I was speaking to a friend. He's like, yeah, I sent my Harley over there. They go and ride from San Fran to LA. I'm like, oh, you can send a Harley. I can send a dirt bike. Easy. So, I, yeah, I got on to this guy that does it all the time. He sends like five or six bikes over a week. Yeah. Um, and then we got the bike there, sent the whole thing over, and it was yeah, it was real easy, simple. like And worthwhile, obviously. Yeah, front wheel in, front wheel out, get it there. Went, after I flew into LA, went to the depot, got it out of the depot, built it, and it was ready to go in an hour. That's insane. Hey, hang on two seconds. <clears throat> Just go and see. This is actually the um sorry about that. Yeah. Right. Corey looks good now. All um, right. yeah, you look well, I mean you look good before. <laughs> <laughs> um this is the first time we've used these skull candies. They're they sick. Um, we have to wait for these cords to get in because like a normal pair of headphones yeah they've just got small cords so we we're like we have to order like long ones cords. to go into there so but yeah they're coming i'm actually pretty pumped on them yeah i can hear myself sweet <laughs> real good is it weird hearing yourself like no it's not too bad have you done have, have you done like any in studio podcast no. stuff before oh no only one i've ever done was with you yeah, at Oz X. At Oz X, yeah mm. yeah isn't it fucking gnarly how different your life is like at <clears throat> Oz X was even a trip because you were in like that best whip like yep. i feel like that's when momentum started to pick up for you was around that Oz X time and the conversation we were having then was like 
damn I can't believe how much my life has changed and then it's like fast forward to that was basically 12 months ago yep pretty and close. then fast forward another 12 months it's like the did whole. you ever expect that this shit was going to go down the way it did nah because when we spoke it was like I'd done well at X Games Sydney and then it was like coming back to Oz X to try and win win again or back up from winning in 2017 and that's really all we had to to kind of feed off and then now it's like I, not in my wildest dreams I ever thought that I could ever call myself like a back-to-back X Games gold medalist like even like a, if someone said it to me I would have laughed at them around that time when we last spoke so it's been crazy man so in a whirlwind still trying to just trying to find my feet still yeah well because i mean you've only been back for like a, not even a month right yeah yeah so i got back like three weeks ago and then since then like yeah it's been hectic trying to get ready for monster cup so so let's go back to the the start of all of this so before anybody knew who you were before you had a rock star hat on before you had like anything what were you doing and then what was the first idea of like i could do this thing and win x games like how did this happen so gary reed took a shot on me showtime fmx um to come back and work at movie world we had bikes there and i was just hired as a full-time driver so what were you doing before that though before that like to even get into any of this i was working at movie world in germany riding and driving in the show over there and then before that I was riding a show in China which Dave Ellis put me up for Ah. that's where it all started riding a bike for money was in China in 2009 Dave Ellis took me to China and I was there for a year come home got hurt went back for the same company in Germany then Showtime Gary hired me to come home and work at Movie World and that's when we had bikes and cars and that's when like, that was before Sam Duncanson ruined that for everybody yeah <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Sam <laughs> sorry Sam but yeah yeah that's when Sam, that's when all that was around so I was riding with Robbie riding with Sam we'd ride every day so that's just like I was just learning whips just riding for fun because I'd just be a fill-in rider because I was a full-time driver yeah right so when I when a, when a rider was off or sick or anything I'd fill in so then I then I eventually start just riding more and learning to whips and stuff and then I rode for Bailey at uh, the Oz the Grand Prix in Melbourne right he had a best whip comp there ah. yeah so that's when I first started to try and ride in competitions and that was in 2016 I think and I got third there and then the next comp was Oz X in 2017 so it's hap- it's like been recent well I guess like for what do you say what year were you in Germany though uh, 2014 13 and 14 yeah okay so I mean <clears throat> it's it's been like a few years sort of journey to yep. sort of get to that point, right? Yeah, yeah. And so how did you get into the, like, how did anyone even sort of know to hire you for those gigs? And so you did the driving stuff before you did the riding stuff. Yeah. So I just put a video on YouTube and I don't know if you know, um, Daniel oh, McFarlane. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we were mates and he worked for Showtime. And one that once Gary got the showtime, uh, the contract for the show at Movie World, Gary was searching for drivers and stuff. Yeah. And Rad, Raddy's like, oh, there's, I got a mate, have a look at his video. And that's how it kind of, I put, I worked like, I'd just try and film and put together this video. I'd just be on my phone and I put it on YouTube and then, yeah, just right. Can you pull that up? What would we type in to watch this video? Corey Creed stunt reel 2015, maybe? Corey Creed fucking mad dog. <laughs> maybe just seeing what we were riding back then. We'd ride like CR250F, jumping 75 foot every day to like a downy. It's really? half, half the size of what we ju- jump to now. Um, is that the, what was the clip that the Rival Boys helped you out with? Because didn't Statsy and Joel help yep. you out with like a clip that that was in your blue ute, right? And yeah. And then you were drifting to the compound and then you rode at the compound? Yeah, with Matty Mac. Yeah. So it was me, Matty so Mac. Matty Mac did that one. Yeah, yeah. So uh-huh. that was before 2017 Oz X. So that's the one that I've seen. So this one is different. So yep. stunt reel. So you just did this one like on your iPhone. So oh, this so is see, it's that old. One. It's that old. It's not even up anymore. Really? But this is the one I did at Movie World. This isn't the one that Gary seen was like, I oh, will give this guy a shot. This is just the one that I made once I'd started working for him. Yeah, right. Because <clears throat> like we got we got so much time in between shows to just kind of do what we want, kind of film some stuff and. Damn. So you did you pick the whip thing up pretty quick? Because you obviously yeah. raced and stuff your whole yeah. life, right? Yeah, yeah. So before China, I'd, we, me and Dad, and that we would try and race and go around the country and do all that, like the Queensland stuff. 
So who was your main um, competition as a junior? Like who were you sort of battling? Like Sam Duncanson. Okay, so oh, you... he was actually the year below me. Okay, Harley Quinlan. Yeah, before yep, he got yep, hurt. Yep. Yeah, so Sean Redhead, Ferris. Yeah, yeah, Louis. That that same era. And where were you as a motocross dude in relation to those guys? Nowhere. So you were just like no. Nah. So you were like Harry Bink. Yeah, 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 both nowhere. <laughs> Pretty much exactly that. Because yeah. that's, that's no. what Harry always jokes that like he remembers Jats lapping him. Yeah, I'd go. I, yeah, like Rick Jackson was, and he, I can't even remember. He would have been on like a sixty-five. Yeah, maybe. he was way younger because he's only twenty-four boys. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would have been yeah sixty-fives when I was like junior lights. But I'd be lucky to finish like, oh, I won a pro race at Bundaberg once and got second at the Southeast Queensland titles, but nothing like. Yeah, yeah, Queensland title, right? Yeah, but so were you one of those kids that was always just like insanely good at whips? Not really. Really? Nah, I was like I'd whip, but I never thought that they were good at good, good, you know. Yeah. And then once I, it was Robbie Marshall that kind of taught me how to turn down. We were riding like at a practice in the morning before the shows, and he's like, "Try it," because he was doing turn downs. Yeah. He's like, "Why don't you try and do a turn down?" Because I was just trying to do motor whips. I'm like, "Oh yeah, I'll try it." And then I picked them up pretty quickly. And then started getting them pretty big, pretty backwards. And then ever since then, it's kind of just been doing turndowns. It's so <clears throat> crazy that it, it's almost, it's like a hidden talent in a way, right? Yeah. It's like a hidden talent that you sort of never knew you even had. Yeah, it's funny because like, it's like things are just like falling into place. But yeah. like I've worked at them. But when I think about it, I'm like, man, that's the that's the per- like that's the best possible outcome i've seen it in my head for it to happen yeah like when i was doing it or trying to work towards it i'd hope that that would happen and those things happened huh. yeah put putting in the effort and doing it all yeah, yeah it all worked out really well yeah and even from like obviously knowing you for the last 12 months since the oz x thing it's like yeah. you seem to be it's like you've manifested <clears throat> all of this and it's like you can sort of see the work though yeah, yeah. so it's like you can see the results and while they're sort of crazy in a way it's like not when you see also the work that goes into it like every it seemed like every day for a year you had a video on your story or your instagram of you hitting that quarter pipe yeah well like i'd jump it twice a week so yeah. i was just trying everyone knows how big social media is now so i just try no matter what it was what it tagged hashtag whatever i was always trying to tag x games hashtag and i even get like called out for it sometimes oh what are you doing like tagging that tagging x games you're not going to get in and i'm like, how else are you meant to try yeah. and get on the radar like so i'd just tag and hashtag do whatever i could like i'd even message jared mcneil and we spoke about it the other week really yeah where were we i think we were at oh, we're in norway flying to norway and he's like remember when you used to message me trying to get you get me to get you into x games I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course I remember. The fucking hustle is real, bro. Yeah, I was like, I was, he's like, you were stepping on like my, you know, this is my thing. Yeah. You know, I'm from Australia. I'm the only Australian. I'm like, yeah, no, I, I well, knew. Well, he's not really. Yeah. Like, there's Josh Sheehan. There's yeah, Sheeny and that. Yeah. Like, but, like, Jared's like the, the whip dude. Gold medals. Yeah. He's a successful one within that category, that yeah, discipline. Yeah. And I was like coming, trying to step on his turf and I knew straight away where I was, but what else are you meant to do? Yeah, true. Like, where else do you go? I didn't know the organizers. I don't even know who invites people, invites riders. Yeah. I'm like, the only person I kind of knew was you. Yeah. So I was just hit you up. You know, if it worked out, it did. It did. If it didn't. But then you're in the same place as you were before. It, done, it didn't yeah. matter. Yeah. It's that funny thing with, you're only going to get told no. Mm. So what's, why not ask? Have you what? always been like that your whole life, do you think? Uh, no, nah, not really. Um yes or no kind of yeah no, i don't i don't like asking stupid stuff yeah and then just be like oh i don't care if they say no who cares i'll ask stuff that's like either important re- important and it's you know mature and professional yeah i'm not gonna be like little dick it's just yeah like, but you've got to you, you do have to have like a certain level of belief in yourself to like feel worthy of sending that message and tagging x game you know what i mean yeah. so it's like any dickhead could do that but it's like to you know you back to it back up, it up you back, and yeah. you know there's a definitely a perfect storm that takes place for this shit to work out the way that it did yeah i know i could always do it it's just getting the opportunity to do it yeah and thankfully enough like bailey and you know sando put oz x on and that's kind of where once i'd won 2017 that's where it kind of it all started rolling in the right direction yeah and then I kind of I put a lot of time and money into pushing it along. Yeah. Because there's like there's so many kids that just think oh yeah I'll go and do good to that and then 
I'll get hit up. Yeah. Because you won't. Unless you put the time and effort and you roll the momentum in the right way and get on the radar for certain people, then you're not going to get hit up. Yeah. So you've got to put the work in. It's a skill from either way. Yeah. Marketing yourself, I think. Marketing yourself, writing, and being a good person. Like People don't want to deal with you if you're a dick. Dude, you're the, you are <clears throat> one of the few people in the industry or whatever that like we're around where literally no one says a bad word about you like nobody it's that's, fucking crazy well that's what you try to work towards yeah, some people, people just can't pull i can't pull it off like <laughs> you know some people can't pull that shit off i mean when you got to be a dick you got to be a dick for the right reasons yeah but when you got to be a real good person or like if you there's certain people that are going to help you go towards your being successful or towards the, your goals mm. then you go a little bit over the top nice for them that's yeah. how i see it. i'm like oh you i can help you as much as you can help me we're going to be good mates but i'm going to treat you like you're my best mate yeah but it doesn't mean i'm not loyal to them or i'm fake yeah but that's just how it's just how business works i see it yeah but like so yeah i just try to just try to be at the very minimum try to be a good dude treat everyone like they treat me or treat everyone like they're my mates and then see what happens from there on do you think that the fact that <coughs> that you really have lived such a normal life like you you haven't been the like there's dudes that they come through like ah willie and it's not taking any this not any yeah, yeah. against ah willie but it's like he's a young dude and since he was 14 15 at a skate park he's been essentially famous with sponsors and he's doing the thing obviously it's because he's a fucking freak talent yeah and he was born at the right age around that social media with youtube blah 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 blah. so like for him it's a different path so what you've had to come from is like you've had a job for a long time you were just a dude that got his ass kicked by factory dudes as a motocross guy do you think that that those lessons and like your real world experience up to this point has sort of played a pretty big role i 100 percent like kids that haven't really been growing up with everything they cherish it a little bit more and they put in that extra effort to try and make it work whereas kids are you know I've, you know thankfully for good for them that their parents have always they've grown up with money they don't have to put in as much effort because no matter where they finish or do what whatever they do they still doesn't matter yeah because the money's there families are there whereas some like for me if i didn't do good and that was another chance that dad didn't want to spend the money to show us to go racing the week after. Yeah. So I feel like if you, you weren't brought up with, you know, all these opportunities and you work towards it more and you like, for me, I just, I've learned a lot from my family, like in the best possible way that I didn't have a lot of money and we never had a lot of money, but we always tried to do everything no matter what. So I've just always just given it my all from then and just learned from that, that I don't want to be like that. I want to be successful and I'll do everything that I can to be successful so that when it comes to that situation and we got money or if my kids need to go racing or anything, then we've got the money and we can go racing. And what, where, where did you grow up? You're pretty local to here, right? Goldie. Yeah. Yeah, Grew up in the Goldie. Whereabouts? Uh, Ashmore, Banoa. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And then, so it was pretty tough growing up, like trying to race and stuff like that back in in those days. I wagged school for my missus that I have now. How long have you just been together like a long time, eh? Yeah, we've been together. Oh no, we've only been together for five years, but we you known each other forever. Yeah, we went we went out in school. Yeah, right. And I wagged school to get to walk her home, and um, Dad found out, <laughs> and we, I was going to race Reedy Creek last round of last club day of the year, and I was winning, and <laughs> I went down to load and bike up. And he's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "It's club day. You know, we're going, we're going racing." And he's like, "No, you're not. You wagged this week. We're not going." And it was all I had to do was turn up and finish like top five to just win a club championship, and he didn't take me. That's heavy. I lost it. I was man. I, I still even t- today, like ne- won't let him leave it down. <laughs> I'll hate him forever for that one. It's there's like an, an eighty-five X, cc. There's an X Games gold, and then a missing <laughs> yeah. Reedy Creek title yeah, that just 80, fucking burns. C grade eighty-five cc. C grade. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one I want. Yeah, and he didn't take me. I was devo. There's a lesson in that. Yeah. Did yeah. that shit stick with you though? Like in terms of the like, you know, because obviously that's a fucking hard can't move. But yeah, yeah. there's definitely some merit to that logic on his behalf. You know, for sure, I would have done the exact same thing. Yeah, if he my kid was wagging, but I, I was like, but I was I was walking a chick home. Yeah, I was hanging out with chick. Dad, 
Yeah, the pussy. Come on, Daddy. Come on, bro. Yeah. You get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She ain't yeah. easy to come by when you're in school. Nah, bro, when right? you got it, you got to get it. Yeah, yeah. You got to get it while yeah. you're getting good. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, nah, it don't matter. He's like, we're not going. So Fucking heavy. But yeah. it was cool. It was good now that I look back at it because it's discipline and, you know, so, you know. How do you, like, because I've got... <clears throat> like a fairly like a similar in a way of like the way that we grew up was like it was pretty tough with being able to afford to go racing like me and my brother shared bikes like yep. he raced in the junior lights and i raced in the senior lights on the same fucking thing so like that and it was always went junior lights seniors so like if maddie crash bent handlebars fucking broke a clock like that's how i had to go racing you oh know? so you had you had one bike yeah to share. one bike to yeah. share one bike and that was it and like the shittest of everything yeah. when it come to like gear and stuff like that yeah and it, i know i just i fucking hated it at the time and i just was so like down on it and you know i just was so bummed i wasn't one of the kids that like had all the cool shit yeah but it's like you look back at it now and you do really think appreciate that, it you know do you have that same sort of feeling for like your childhood and the way you grew up yeah because it, it sucks when you're in it right yeah yeah it does because like well perfect example my best mate luke wilson him and his old man they had money fucking loaded <laughs> <laughs> they always fucking loaded, loaded. <laughs> so they always uh. had the good stuff and that and it'd just be me with stock stuff no yeah. matter what like i was probably in a better position than what you were at least like i was had my we got our own bikes eventually like, yeah but, yeah you know the first few years like that's how it started that, for yeah, us like for sure and to for my first bike that i bought that thing like yep. i bought a cr 125 with like i worked at a fucking video store and an iga you know so yeah. it's just like but at the time i was just so fucking angry and frustrated <laughs> at the situation yeah i remember packing i was working for a little corner store packing drinks in the freezer and that what, yeah did you how old are you when you're doing that oh 12, 13, I yeah. think. Mackers. Yeah. First job was Mackers. Really? Yeah, with my be- one of my good mates, Luke Whitaker. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Did- you know Luke from Elevate? Yeah, yeah, Where, where yeah, I train? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's sick. We, our first jobs were Mackers at the same one. We'd go from school uh, in Arvo, we'd go to work. What was it? What was the Goldie like back then, <laughs> like living around this sort of area? Is it super different now to what it was, do you think? Well, I never... I We grew up like Southport, Ashmore, so coming down here was like coming down to sydney yeah back then yeah it was like a long way away yeah so it was it was we just ride bmx every day actual bmx track after every after school every day so it was definitely better yeah yeah (laughs) but you could see like how much it's changed here now because i wonder that like Mm. because um the gold coast is kind of like la no one's from the gold coast no no and it's like la you meet someone that is like born and raised in LA you're like Jesus fuck we should sit down and talk what was it like because yeah. it's just not that many of them everyone's left they've just got this hard feeling about the Gold Coast these days the way it is I find mm. everyone just like oh the Gold Coast isn't like it used to be and that well just don't surround yourself around that kind yeah. of sport. So, you know hang out in the right places on the Gold Coast I yeah. still love it here I'll always love it here but I hear so many people talking so much shit about it yeah I feel like um, there's definitely like you can just get so deep in the scene yeah and you just get fucking lost in the source you know it's like you're banging the same <laughs> chicks your mates banging the same ever like there's really not that like burly for instance like gb since, yeah since we've yeah maybe G-G. we're talking about it <laughs> i'm gonna be the guy <laughs> maybe we'll make grant uh but you know you hear the stories of that shit and it's yeah. like you know there's only so many fucking places and then like you're like, well, it's a pavilion. And then it's like, that's played out in three months. And now it's the fucking pink monkey. And it's like, oh, yeah, the pink like, monkey. fuck, you're complaining about this thing that you're doing to yourselves. Like, yeah, yeah. I've never, I haven't even hung out down this way very often. Yeah, Like really? pink monkey, I haven't been, it's only new. It's only just, yeah. What's the other one everyone hangs out at? Pavilion. Yeah, well, the one next door to pink monkey. Oh, Justin Lane. Yeah, so I've never, I've been there once. Yeah. So but like, yeah. everyone hangs out there all the time. What's well, so, I mean, it's easy because like, every just walk there, you know? Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's really the reason. Yeah, for me, it's like, two hour drive with traffic <laughs> it's <laughs> coming from drive. Maudsland up my way <laughs> but so where is that now so it's just behind movie world oh, Maudsland yeah fucking thing bloody these mics I feel like yo I still got you yeah it's just I still got can me you, can you hear it did yeah. it drop out for you Mick no I wonder if it's just dropping out for me Fuck <laughs> hang on two secs yep. yeah sorry mate fucking tech, right. tech issues so yeah <laughs> where so are you you don't live at the compound though right where you no nah. no nah, so uh my good buddy's family owns a compound and but he lives out there too yeah so when quarter pipe kind of came about after for x game sydney um i think it was coglin coglin was kind of organized all he's like would you ride quarter pipe i'm like yeah that'd be sick yeah and then um i rang scotty because i knew he lived on the farm 
I'm like, is there anywhere out there we can like even just a hill we can cut into the hill and build the landing? And he's like, yeah, yeah let me have a chat. And then it was like a five acre block where they keep some of the cows. It had like a pile of dirt that was almost ten meters high. It was like perfect. It was it could couldn't have gone any better. Like it was like made to be kind of deal. So we just trimmed into the into that and then build the but got the the ramp built. And then from then on, it was some pretty smooth sailing so that's literally goes to what you were saying about like how it just seems like everything, everything's just working everything out. is like kind of fell into place like you know obviously you direct it yeah but it it, it worked it worked out each way have you had like any fucking stone sessions or any just like deep thoughts about like why has all of this happened to me oh i got it like people some people like dude do you realize everything that's just happened i'm like not really because I was brought up to be the most hum- like to be humble. My 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 family have always tried to keep me as grounded as possible, and I'm always going to live by that. So when people are like, "Dude, you f- just did this. You fuck. You just did all this." I'm like, "Hey, that's I love it." Well, what about you? How's yeah. your day been? You know? Or to me, it's like I've got they're good goals that I've knocked w- knocked off, but I've got bigger goals, and I'm just like kind of already, you know, charging towards those. Yeah, but I mean, at some point though, like you, I mean, it's not not humble to really take stock of like what you've done and yeah. the thing you know like so have, have you had those like moments of reflection where it's like you just can't believe what has happened you know like because you are a super humble dude every interact mm. like there's i don't think there's a risk of anyone thinking that you're, you're not dick. and it's yeah. like it's funny because you know the people that i get on the podcast are cool as fuck people yeah but a lot of times the problem is is that they want to be so humble yeah but okay. it's like they're not you know what i mean they're not it's, opening up yeah kind of thing. and it's like yeah, yeah. so no one is going to think you're a fucking <laughs> dick if you say like it is crazy you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like don't think that that's the risk you're nah, like to I, here. no i'm pumped i'm like it, it's i yeah like i'm over the moon about it i'm stoked it couldn't have gone any better it mm. really couldn't have like even all every every one of my jumps in america three competitions could i had one sketchy one yeah right and there was i was driving down the road the other day and i was just like fuck you are you're the best on the planet there's no you 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 won it all you know you, you beat the guys you've always wanted to beat or you've always watched so you you you, you beat them you're better than them you're good you you're the best so that i've got to like remind myself that way yeah you, you got a world record man it's like crazy and i was like fuck yeah that's right that's fucking sick well like because it's hard because i mean even for me with like the jujitsu stuff right it's yep. like you, you gotta have no ego you can't do that but it's like you do to be a competitor like the definition of com- competition at its core like you need an ego to want to win yeah 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 so it's like it's a tightrope balance that you have to walk between having enough ego to get the job done but not having so much of an ego that you're a fucking moron <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> and where people are like don't really like you yeah yeah, yeah because yeah. it's like you're that like a floyd mayweather or a, you know yeah, there's, yeah, a, yeah. there's a there's a line that you have to walk but it's like you know if i had zero ego in a competition in a fight then i just let the dude fucking choke yeah, me. yeah, and yeah. i'd be like it's all good man i don't care yeah i, yeah, I yeah. have no ego next so one. it's like exactly so it's like you do need some form of ego to like be a competitor but to be a good person you also want to have as little ego as possible it's a it's a hard balance to find yeah well exactly i i for me how i do it i just listen to some music like an hour before the competition i just like re- tell myself like, you can do it you're better than them don't be a fucking pussy you're good i even like in my bar pad i'll write a little like a x game sydney don't be a fucking pussy i saw that <laughs> like yeah it's like you gotta step out of your your humbleness and you gotta go and perform yeah and then you can step back in like perfect example tyler berriman the most humblest dude you'll ever meet the best dude you'll ever meet man i got so much respect for that kid but when it comes to riding a dirt bike you see him he's like you dog. see him yeah yeah, yeah. he kills it but you see him like before like even a jump at world games he's like in his groove he's like listening to music whatever he's doing and then after when he gets off the bike man best person you'll ever meet yeah 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 i got a lot of respect for that dude um and the rest of them <clears throat> do you get on with all those dudes or every one of them because it's, no. it's a small group like what you guys do like there's not that many people in the world well there's pretty much only five or six of us yeah and when i first like x game sydney was when i first competed like against axel and that but all, every one of those guys have like invited me in with arms wide open yeah no one's been like oh you're the new kid on the block trying to step on our territory it's none of that it's been like full gates open come in it was like, i think it was 
quarter pipe practice in Paris when I went over there before the competition last year. That's when I first rode with them, first met them. After every one of my jumps, Axel, Berriman, Colby, dude, that was sick. That yeah. was fucking awesome. You know, you're killing it. Like when they didn't need to do that, I was a new dude, like just trying to come and ride, and they were just pumped. I wonder if that's because um, it is such a small group. Because for you guys, it's like there's a legit sport there, and there's a around a legit sport becomes an I- industry. Like you and now have a, an income based off this sport that yep. you do and it's like if you guys were dicks to each other at this early stage in the game and it become fragmented and and watered down a little bit and that you guys weren't getting along like it's because it's hard to progress a sport if everyone's just kind of off doing it separately like you guys are sort of in this little boat together and it's like x games could clip this event tomorrow yeah and exactly then, and then you'd be fucked yeah we, so it's like it's sort of you guys are half responsible for like kind of propping this whole thing up we need to put on a good front enough for people to invest into our sport like what like, like you said x games can cut it straight away like we are we are struggling for riders as it is but I think what we have, which is really strong, we're all like best mates. Yeah. Like we all are competitors, but we're all best mates too. So we can put, um, we kind of give companies um, secure, like they're secure to put money into us yeah. because we can represent them well or something like that. That's how I see it anyway. Yeah, definitely. Um, with the, so we'll go back to the compound because it's a pretty cool story. Yeah. So like when did that sort of, thing start like the momentum first start to build when it comes to the to getting this compound sorted straight after my uh, invite for x game sydney for whip yep i spoke to cam coglin i'm like we were just talking about the event and he's like oh we're struggling for riders for quarter pipe and that's when we i spoke to scotty and the klein schmidt families uh, at the time he still does uh sj earthworks he has built my compound looks after it maintains it still to this day that's when we spoke i'm like i need a quarter pipe and then that's when we found that pile of dirt and we started shaping then gary from showtime he gave me two ramps and i was like i'm just gonna i was just thinking i'm like how am i going to build a quarter pipe yeah so i cut well they bolted it away from each other two set um normal aussie fmx comp ramps pulled them pulled them apart sat them on the pile of dirt and then just made the dirt the transition out of dirt yeah and then we just eyed it we're like oh it looks pretty steep let's just try that so really then, then we pulled the dirt like the, on the landing and then I just tried to jump it, crashed, 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 because the thing was too steep, too much angle. It was just going to the moon. Front front end was so high, and I kept crashing. So then we started to change it, started to jump, and then we just figured it out as it, as it went on from there. So I kind of like I owe it all mainly to the Kleinschmidt family and Scotty from SJ Earthworks, because without them, I wouldn't have even had a quarter pipe, let alone just a jump to practice whips on. So yeah, yeah, without them. It might not have all been possible it's insane eh, to think mm. that yeah. so with the um with that ramp so you there's no like spec ramp or there's no it's because i feel like with the like that was the thing with the freestyle ramp now like a 75 foot ramp's a 75 foot ramp yeah, right yeah yeah so the now we've got our 18 footer the normal comp quarter pipe that we use so there is like a standard full spe- yeah the full standard spec ramp which i got the specs from x games to build mine yeah but my ramp before that was just based just a home on job. Yeah, just put it on there. Oh, that looks pretty good. We packed it up a little bit, tried to get a little bit steeper at first. Yeah, took it away, started going higher, steeped it up a little bit more, started landing too low on the landing, <laughs> took the steepness out of it. The the best part about quarter pipe is chasing the setting with the bike and the ramp setup. Yeah, like right. The scariest thing for me going into a quarter pipe contest is the first jump, no matter what, because you don't know where you're gonna land. You can knuckle it, you can land on the flat. It looks good. Looks, Yeah, it looks right. But my first jump at Minneapolis, front wheel, rear wheel, knuckled. Didn't even jump. I'm like, nah, ramp's not where it meant to be. Colby, first jump, knuckled. Really? Yeah, that's the scariest part of any jump. Even at World Games, I was like looking at this ramp. And I jumped it the year before. And I was like, man, what am I, what am I doing back here? Yeah, and yeah, right. Yeah, because yeah, that's massive, 32 foot. Because that's what Berriman said. That thing's just like fucking gnarly you see it on video and you're like that's big but when you're there in person like it's it's stupid it's like five stories high just well it'd be three or four stories high just the up ramp and you gotta you gotta just pin it off that as fast as a 450 will go no thanks bro i was the same i was the same you start you you know they give you four or five days practice yeah but is it easy to like 
half ass that you know what i mean like there's because i mean you've like you've got to be going fast just to get to the top of yeah. that ramp so it's like to just jump four feet you've still got to be pretty fucking you've still got to be committed yeah if you're not committed you don't turn you just come you just come rolling back down backwards so it's um yeah full commitment with that stuff that's what's the scariest part yeah you either got to go for it or you just don't go you for it you don't ride at the yeah, ramp yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so what was the like what was the learning process then for like how long did it take to sort of get semi comfortable with it all man it's still even to this day i'll still second guess myself yeah. like even though you know i ride it and i've got one at home every day or every week leading up to the so i'd ride friday saturdays away from movie world every week on the friday i'd be like man it would be wednesday i'd be like fuck i gotta ride this ramp on friday really there yeah. was on your mind that much all week i'm like man i gotta ride this thing on friday and like i'd already already riding it good probably going like 25 30 foot and then i'd go home like yeah i'm sick two days my sunday monday but like, got it i'm feel good tuesday i'm like start thinking about it wednesday i'm like fuck i gotta ride this ramp on friday <laughs> dude it's gnarly that it's like that in your head yeah, yeah. because normally you do something like you can even see the dudes that well perfect example would be like the first time you do a backflip yeah and you're like fuck this i'm gonna die and then yeah. you do it and then it's like three weeks of doing backflips you're just cruising doing backflips but it's like you you'd think that would happen with a quarter pipe ramp right yeah well if my first if that's like coming into you for your first backflip even the first jump off quarter pipe you're like oh thank god but then you're like even for me for the second third jump i'm like still feels like the first jump because it's like wind and bike set up because mm. it's such a big ramp like it's so much goes into it for me i don't know like i don't really like it because i feel like i know too much now mm. so when i need something done i can feel it on the ramp well I've, when i know something's not right I, I know it straight away yeah so i'll try to fix it but then i'll, I'll kind of overthink it a little bit yeah i'm trying to chase stuff when it probably shouldn't just be chasing it just keep riding kind yeah of thing. Okay. so i've been i feel like i've been around the sport enough now to know like i've had my suspension out of my bike probably 20 times in the last six months really back to costanzo just like let's try this let's try that i'm getting i'm feel too dipped let's try something in the shock just always trying to chase the setting that's the that's where the motivation comes from yeah and i guess then that would sort of explain the <clears throat> the lack of comfortability on the bike and second guessing it is because you're going in there with like new settings every time all right? time yeah so i took a set of a kit shower stuff to world games from my good buddy nick schmidt yeah like full set of suspension because i didn't think my stuff was going to be hard enough yeah and the stiffer it is for that quarter pipe the higher you can go because it, it the softer it is it slows you down kind of thing yeah you're literally going to decelerate as it goes through the stroke yeah, right yeah 100 percent. and then after the first day of practice i'm like I'm, i was too scared to bolt it in because i didn't know where it was going to send me i don't know if it was going to like yeah. push through too much knuckle it be too stiff with too much re rebound land on the bottom and when you're going up that high you don't want to be landing on the flat is uh, there a thing that you could do with the quarter pipe to where you could like go into a foam pit do you think or is it just not you could like it'd just be like how they do now with the flare ramps yeah you just have right. a big one yeah but still yeah you, yeah you definitely could just for like the testing side yeah of it. And for like, sure have you thought about like how far you could really go yeah so i've already reached out to guinness world records to try and do a record jump yeah i can't say any more about it yeah. i'm still trying to work on it yeah. but yeah i'm trying to do like a record jump at the moment try and get it locked in for next year so. so do you have like a number in your head of like what you think is possible yeah and speed and ramp size and stuff so it's i just want to push to sport i want to do new stuff that no one's done before I want to break records or Guinness World Records, set Guinness World Records. That's a big thing for me. Yeah. People are like, oh, what are you going to do now? You won gold and gold and that. I'm like, yeah, obviously I want to back my medals up, but I want to do different stuff too. Like mm. I want to try stuff maybe on fire or try to go high. I want to do 50 foot next year. Yeah. So we're gonna, me and Taz, my mechanic, we'll put everything we can into the, to the bike next year to try and get that high. Well, that's what Sam was saying before is that you and taz were like so detailed about the bike like changing air pressures before each run and like you guys were just breaking it down so much yeah so we had like we had a routine in three jumps try that setting stop talk about it change it three jumps see how it felt and that went for four days at world games same at x games like we had two hours practice before the competition an hour each day 
but quarter pipes like you can only jump it so much like you can but it's hard on your body and you know you want to be good for the competition yeah so probably only ride like half an hour each day but yeah a few jumps try something feels good it's whipping around too quick slow the rebound down um ignition at world games like i felt like i was reaching the limit before i come off the ramp yeah and i did it in 10, 2018 i reached the limit before i got off the ramp and it just, it's it just like, goes flat it's just like hitting the brakes yeah and it just had no rotation i went straight up and just ditched it and just like slid down the landing on my back really yeah and because it's like artificial grass you just slid but i was just so it's like so lucky yeah it's just still be- fucking sketches you out too yeah just because i hit the limiter at the top of the ramp so we tried this new setting in the ignition which revved the bike out higher than normal from like eleven thousand to fourteen thousand, and um, it worked better. But then it kind of like it was like that fine line for the engine, yeah. like from either blowing up or anything like that. So oh yeah, because we you're ch- running too hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were changing all kinds of stuff. And then I, I'm assuming that like the whole gearing and stuff would be pretty. Yeah, we changed. We went down two and back up one. Um, what else? And then suspension. It was mainly suspension mm. because you can do two or three clicks, and it can be the difference between landing on the bottom of the landing or landing really high. So. And so, what are you looking for in your suspension? Like, what's the perfect world, like the Goldilocks zone for you? Well, your first jump, you'll even know straight away if it's got too much rebound because you'll land pretty low down the landing. And then if it doesn't have enough and it feels dead, you'll knuckle it. Mm. so then we'll try and we'll put some more rebound in the front so the the rebound is controlling your like i guess your horizontal away from the ramp yeah essentially yeah just popping off to get back to the landing yeah so So how far back do you track like so if the ramp is here like say let's say the ramp is zero yeah are you going backwards when you land or are you going forwards well you're going backwards so but, you're actually jumping and floating backwards. Yeah. So the ramp the, you'd want to be from like like you said zero. Perfect example is zero to zero. Yeah. But you can it's for trying to find the setting to get to zero. So the first jump might be like plus two, or the first jump might be minus two or something like that. So it's just trying to find the setting to bring it. So the ramp will be about here. Yeah. You want to land straight next exactly where the ramp is on so the landing. So where do they set that up though? Like because the nitro one looks like that the. Can you pull up the nitro ramp, Mick? Like, just the world game. So it's, it'll always be like just in front of the landing. All right. So yeah. So yeah, see it so there. It's like so. It actually, yeah, it is for uh, forward it, from the landing. Yeah, uh, from it's the in front of the landing, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So basically, it's not so much technique that is getting you. Um, the your technique isn't controlling the forward or back where you land it's bike setting yeah because the faster you come into it the more you push through it yeah okay and if you roll it if you come in too quick too early you push through and you knuckle it but if you come in slow at first and you wind it on from the bottom of the ramp that initial wind on gives you more pop off it because you're not compressing through the ramp so much so you yeah if you wind it on from the bottom you pop down the landing more It's, it's tricky man it's it keeps me coming back for more every time. So what's your, like, because when Tyler was on here, he was talking about, like, you want to go as straight as possible. Yeah, yeah. So, like, explain, I guess, that you, what like what's in your head, like, your checklist of getting to, the say, the world record height. So pre- well, we'll, we'll talk about World Games ramp, ramp because it's a little bit. Are they different? Yeah, so yeah. World Games is pretty much... The faster you can ride into that thing and the straighter you can go, the, the higher you can go. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, pretty much to get the thing turned to come back down, you need to be like, kind of like Tyler. I, I got a similar riding style to Tyler on the World Games ramp because it's a little bit more, bi- it's bigger and it's a bit easier for style. Yeah. So the faster you can go, the straighter you can go on the quarter bike ramp, you just kind of lean, lean back under it and you kind of just like upside down. Yeah. But with the X Games one, because it's smaller, it's so much more aggressive. So you can't come in too quick. Cause you so it's really like popping you off that. Yeah. It's not like a floater feeling. No, it's like a super kick quarter pipe. Yeah, okay. So the faster you come in, I was bottoming out in Norway and I was just going straight to the roof. No turn or nothing. And I don't know if you've seen Colby's crash at Minneapolis. No, we could, was it on YouTube? We could find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, he come in too quick. It was on like his fifth jump, probably his second last jump. And he come in too fast, bottomed out, went to the roof and, um, and come down like had a pretty gnarly crash. So... Which one? Do you know how far in it would be? Yeah, go to like the 17 minute mark. Oh, this is 2018. Oh. oh. No. Yeah, this is 2018. It's not? No, no, no 2019, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this one right here. 
Oh. So go back a bit, Mick. Fuck, that is gnarly, yeah. dude. He got slapped. So I was winning at this point, and obviously he was trying to beat me, and he's just trying to go, come in quicker, but he's come in too quick. Dude, that shit is so gnarly. Like, <laughs> they really got... I, I feel like the first year they didn't get the angles as right, filming-wise. Nah, they f- fixed them with everything, even whip. Yeah, right. Because, yeah, the footage, like that one whip where Berriman overdoes it and, like, barely brings... So this is it, is yeah, it? Yeah, so he'll, he, he's bottomed out there. Front so high. So can you just, like, press the back button, Mick? I'll just talk like through it. Yeah, because it'd be cool to, like... Just, like, the back arrow should just go back, like, 10 seconds. When it's playing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's coming in trying to go, like, a, a little bit faster than what we normally are to yeah. go higher, and he's bottomed out at this point. It's, yeah. And you, you, you're looking at the landing before you come off the ramp, and the front's so high, and he's chasing it. He's chasing the rear around, and because he's still right as he lands, he's just it just pulls his hands off the bars so essentially the front of your bike stays up like the whole time and you're trying like that's what you're trying to do is follow it with the rear yeah 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 so, and you, so what he's done when it's bottomed out it's just floated yeah. the front and yeah. it puts like that weird zero gravity feeling where it's like you feel like you can't turn it back yeah exactly he's like in a stall where you can't get it back yeah right. that's why that's why it's so such a fine line on the ramp because if you bottom out you can't get it back from a certain point and it's all because you've bottomed out through the forks yeah through and, the forks and so that's going too fast too fast and too much commitment yeah right yeah as you can see yard sale here so that's got to be a head fuck because you're trying to go higher as high as you can yeah yeah well, and like how do you go higher you go faster well my my highest jump here at Minneapolis was the limit that's as high as I could go on the night really yeah because i was on the limiter because it we did the same as that it like bottomed out and i went to the roof and i was just on the limiter the whole way i'm like trying to get this thing around it wasn't coming and all the way like to the landing i just got it back and you just just makes it just just got it back yeah and so what are you doing to try and bring the rear around pretty much just like a whip you know how we're all in the limiter to try to keep the momentum yeah as soon as i come off the ramp i knew i didn't have the pop or i knew the pop was like i bottomed out i pushed mm. through it too much so I was just like, oh, you get that feeling. You, you swallow your heart and you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and I was just like on the limit of trying to do, that's all you can do. What else do you do? Yeah. You just hold the thing wide open and you just try and keep the momentum going. Yeah. Mm. That's fucking heavy. But yeah, play, play that again. Yeah, I want to see a couple more of these bad boys. <laughs> yeah, it's such a gnarly, gnarly event. Yeah. Like it really, isn't it? Um, is this the crash? Yeah, this is yeah. the crash fuck so he dude you're so high like that did he get how bad did he get hurt there? he was all right i think he just like whacked his head a bit maybe yeah. a bit of a concussion dude how badass was his uh real moto bit this year his was my favorite he's a fucking g dude and he's and he's a, he's a good dude yeah, yeah right. i talk i talk highly of colby he's always like shown me respect it just goes either way but yeah his wall ride at that off the back of that ramp van or whatever he had gnarly and he it, the better the best thing about it was that he crashed the one before mm. and then he just like got up and he's like yeah here you go so that front's just like just staying you up can't there. Like you bike. can't get the bike you can't get it back from there so like the front wheel is basically higher than yep the rear wheel the entire time and he's trying to stomp on it and it's just too much too much pressure Fuck, you got down to that pretty good. Yeah, yeah. He whacked his head pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it's still a, a big knock. So can we watch one of um, Corey's now? If you go back to the my jump before that one, that's my that was my highest. So yeah, just about there somewhere. Uh, yeah, there you go. So this is the one where I... Uh, just before this jump, I think. Just before Berriman's? Yeah. Dude, he just looks so fucking He's good so all good, the man. time. He's got... Yeah, this one. So go back. It's crazy the difference between you guys. Like, Josh Hill is such a badass on a dirt bike. Yeah. And it's like, you just can't... It, it's obvious that you just can't figure this out in that shorter period of time, right? Yeah, like if someone for that caliber... Of, yeah, like, like he's, on this. he's one of the best dudes. Yeah. Yeah, so you could see, like, yeah, yeah. I was, like, chasing. I'm like, yeah. oh, I wasn't sure if it was going to come around. Uh, the so next, they'll show, like, a slow-mo. Yeah, the next week. video is, pretty, is, is much better. Yeah, okay. But at this point, I'm like, man, this is... To me, this is, like, what I've worked for my whole... The whole... Like, the last 12 months. So you can see now, I'm like... I'm on the limit of the whole... This whole time in the air. So 
the difference between you and Colby's is your rear wheel did end up higher than the front. Yeah, whereas his was, his didn't. Nah. It always stayed up. Okay, so that sort of makes sense with this whole thing. So yeah, so because he came in, he obviously bottomed out harder than me. Yeah, and I could I bottomed out, but I could chase it around, whereas his yeah. was too far gone. Yeah. And then this is TV trying, TV to, trying to get that gold. And I mean, so 30, 30 feet, seven inches is Berriman's for third place. And 32 feet, six inches is first place. Like how big a deal is that two feet? Like how hard is that to make up? Um, it is. Well, Berriman ended up coming up to 31.5 okay. on his next ones. But to get the space between two foot at that height is massive. And so, is it all bike set up? All bike set up. Isn't like that you can, crazy? you can, you can be as committed as you want to. Like if you want to ride as fast as you can at that ramp, go right ahead. But that, that's that's, well, that's, that's the, what happens. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. Um, unless you got the like the bike set up, then it's just that's exactly what's going to happen. You're going to push through it, bottom out. And I think the biggest thing for me going through this whole situation was getting a landing right. Yeah. I'd like there's some landings at home. I'd land and I'd be winded, like just from the landing, and, and I'd step off it. Like, like drop so the no bike, crash, no. no crash, roll away, completely winded. Are you hitting like your chest on like the bars and shit? No, nah, no, nah, just, just it's that much it's force. Just, I snapped a foot peg off like a few months ago, like a, a, a good moto stuff, titanium one, so completely snapped it off. Just pure, nothing wrong. <laughs> nah, no, no, nah, nothing, not nah, everything was normal. And I just like, I was so lucky because it kind of snapped it off, but it kind of was still dangling. Mm. So I didn't like push through and like stomp my leg on the ground. But yeah, completely snapped it off. Yeah, I just it's just so much pressure through your body. It's so hectic, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's gnarly. Until you see it, like it's all right talking about it. Yeah. But when you see it, like that's there hasn't hasn't yet to be a quarter pipe competition in Australia yet. Yeah, I'm, true. So as soon as we do have one, it's gonna it's gonna be sick for for everyone yeah. to see how much goes into it and how high we can actually go. Like just the ramp, like eighteen foot, that's six meters yeah. before we even get off the thing. Yeah. So it's so gnarly it's sick I have, love it have you thought about reaching out to like Showa or KYB or like someone like an actual manufacturer to like see because it's really be the forks right like the shock's not as important or is the shock as just as important as the yeah, forks yeah shock's just as important because I'd like one so my biggest thing well, at Minneapolis for example I struggled and whip because we didn't get the setting right from quarter pipe ah. we put so much into the setting that it's so stiff um that it's too stiff for whip yeah and like with our practice at uh, minneapolis for whip we had i think i had five jumps and that was all we got so to try and get the setting right was just wasn't enough time mm. so we struggled there for whip but after i went to norway we had like a lot more time and my suspension felt real soft after the flight i don't know what happened but it was a bit of a blessing because i felt like i could whip everything was sick turn downs were like pretty backwards pretty much backwards I could get under my whips and stuff. So it was a bit of a blessing knowing how soft it was. So we're kind of just running off that for Monster Cup yeah. and see how we go. But yeah, it's crazy. The settings is more than what I than I, what I like them to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you think that like reaching out to like an actual manufacturer and like really trying to dial in the suspension would be like the next step? For sure. So yeah, it's definitely. Because um, so, Charlie Costanza is a G when it comes to suspension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, he, so he actually he he steers me away from using a kit or any like sh like obviously shower is man you've come standard on the bikes now yeah and he thinks that they're just as good as an a kit kind of setup yeah he'd rather work on the, the stuff that comes factory than the a kit stuff well because i mean really like the difference in that a kit stuff is sometimes the diameter but mostly it's just like the anti-friction sort of coding sort of stuff which is going to give you like initial plushness which yeah. is like out of the window for what you're trying to achieve yeah right? and a little bit of like lightweight stuff like they're, i think they're a little bit lighter yeah they would be a bit lighter yeah, they, for sure yeah well they feel lighter yeah so i'm, I'm not sure i haven't I haven't really exhausted that option yet yeah so um yeah i feel yeah. like the standard suspension it's really it's seems like it's more would be like spring rates it's yeah oil yeah thickness oil heights or like, and all that and then yeah. valving that would yeah. really like there's so much stuff that can sort of be done there yeah i feel like some kind of like gnarly progressive spring would be the move like you remember like the old mountain bike I'm, i wonder a moto springs progressive these days yeah like i'm sure if you got some like hardcore progressive spring that just like got really fucking 
hard by by the end of it you know well i think charlie like we were mates but now we're not he, i think he just hates me because i've had i've pulled my suspension out and like i'll he's just the biggest nerd though that he yeah. would love that oh shit. he loves it <laughs> like he, he he hates me but we got like a, ha- yeah, a love-hate yeah, yeah. relationship but he's just always like I'll, I'll yeah like i said i pull my we've pulled my stuff out over 20 times in the last six months like just i'll feel something like oh not because i want it to be fixed because I just, want, you just to, want to try different shit try, and I just want to try to be better yeah. no matter what so I'm always just pulling stuff out let's try this let's try that and then we'll there's sometimes we'll go back and we'll just keep that setting so yeah he <laughs> he's um he like he likes me for my motivation but he doesn't like me for the, for the, the work bullshit that you've got to <laughs> yeah. Do. have yeah, you yeah. kept like a really detailed log of everything that you've done yeah, and yeah. then wrote down like how it felt and shit like that yeah 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 completely. see that's just cool as fuck to but, me dude like, but I'll just ring him on the yeah. day there's some days i'll even get him out he'll he's been out two or three days and he'll just watch and i'll tell him how it feels but yeah we've got full full book on what we've done at this point what we've what i did in america minneapolis norway full settings so i was on the phone in norway just like what it feels too soft what can we do it was like 10 minutes before um quarter pipe i mean whip i just had quarter pipe last quarter pipe practice I had the forks out pouring oil in the forks trying to stiffen them up you and need two sets of suspension bro yeah <laughs> just need two bikes <laughs> and um poured some more I'm just, i was just, just hoping that it was good for the competition in norway and then my first warm-up jump i was like oh fuck thank fuck it's good because like my whole practice axle was like higher and i wasn't boosting but i was quite i was pretty much there and i wasn't boosting and then after my first warm-up jump i could boost i was like oh fuck thank fuck so yeah I, 10 minutes before the competition we had the forks out putting oil in them trying to just be better that's so hectic yeah i just to me like that's what makes this whole thing with you so rad is just like just the attention to detail and the effort and it's so specific and it's like i just love it when a dude comes along and goes this deep into something with a goal in mind and then you pull it off yeah you know because it's like axel's not doing that you know colby's not doing like those guys and it's not nothing against them or not a negative but it's just like you just did it so much deeper and it's like this is what happens well i seen that i seen that no one put so much effort into it in that perspective so like i like i've just exhausted every option no matter Mm. what like having taz taz come out with me on the weekend my mechanic i I ride whip and quarter part i don't need a mechanic out there but i bring him out anyway because like why not like we're i'm you know there's the market for being successful and money and everything yeah. it's all for me it's it's completely worth it to have him out there like he'll he'll like we change engines in, in, a, in a bike last week yeah so i had an 18 that felt dead felt like it just run its life out so i brought a bike from gary and i'll a second hand one but it was newer and the, um the engine was no good so we pulled my 18 engine out put in a 19 chassis and just just to ride whip on the weekend so we were like we were up to like midnight like two nights before the weekend just trying to swap engines over and just to try and feel at least a little bit good just so i can be comfortable to ride good i feel like you're the kind of guy that even if you weren't professional doing this shit at x games like you'd probably still be pulling motors out of cars and putting new cranks on pushies that you ride to the shop like are you just that dude i'm that dude yeah yeah yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. The fucking, that's attention what I, that's to what detail I yeah <laughs> it's yeah. like you chick gets a fucking beach cruiser and you're like no 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 we should put these cranks on Tire shine. Like, let's get these but you know let's change the gearing <laughs> yeah, like yeah. So is that have you always been like that yeah yeah so growing up racing dad was always we'd always washing bikes it was always like attention to detail pulling them apart pulling them back together so it was always kind of in the blood from from early on and you just enjoy you obviously like enjoy that shit though right oh i love i love being in the garage pulling bikes apart putting them back together you know trying to make them a bit better than what they were before so yeah that's a little like it's like going nearly all my events i'll keep helmets and boots and stuff because it's just stuff to yeah um, memorabilia and that kind of stuff so i'm just i'm big on all my shit looking good yeah so that i can hang it up it's (laughs) like uh what would you like what would you liken this to because it this seems old school in a way to where it's like before there was factory bikes before there was factory riders and you had guys building their own maybe speedway or you know what i mean like these guys that are just you you the dude that's going to do the best is the guy that's the best mechanic and the best driver it sort of seems like that's what the world that you're playing in which is really different 
to freestyle and stuff now like to be good at freestyle it's like you gotta have resi ramps and you gotta have like yeah there's a lot of that accessory sort of stuff but it seems like this is like a real man and machine type of sport right you can be the most talented guy in the world but unless you got talent in marketing yourself and making sure your equipment's up to scratch then that's the difference between Mm. being the best and not being the best it's like unless you can put it put your all your how do you say it all your efforts in to both or everything at once then you're kind of bank bashing your head against the, against the wall mm. you always or like not always but it seems like in this little transition for to being this to now being Corey Creed essentially that everybody knows about like it seems like you've had a bunch of really cool people like even with Sam like how much Sam sort of <laughs> you alright mate like, <laughs> fuck. Uh, but like even you know with just different contacts and like it seems like you really did embrace the like the hustle side of it in terms of because essentially you run a business yeah for sure like well, you run you are a business i'm big on there's like no i in team yeah and like yeah like you said sam and taz and scotty and the client Schmidt family and my, my tiff my fiance it's every one of those per those people without them it wouldn't wouldn't be possible even my dad my mom everyone puts in a little bit of something and it's like yeah you you surround yourself by by the right people if that's another thing if you can't surround yourself with the right people then that's where you lack in being better what um had you done much traveling outside of the country before you went on this whole like x games run and stuff yeah because when i'd lived in germany doing the oh, show there you, you did all that stuff right? so when i'd had my days off there europe you know what europe's like it's quite small yeah two days is more than enough to travel the other side of europe so i pretty much done most of europe china so yeah. how old were you when you went to europe then 19 i think fuck really 2020 i mean 2012 13 and 14 i think so no i was i was 25 24 25 yeah right mm. that's a pretty like sick experience for china was a sick one really like it was europe was 10 times better but china was like an eye opener really yeah it's like third world you see shit it's yeah it's gnarly so what was the what did your life look like at that point in time when you're in china doing those shows uh, i'm just a young kid trying to ride his dirt bike you know for money um had a girlfriend that was probably the worst decision (laughs) you know you go through those those chicks yeah took her over there with me thought it was you know we broke up thought it was the end of the world um yeah life was just about trying to ride and trying to have a girlfriend at that point 18 and 19 what else is it really like yeah true way yeah um what what was like the average like because He's, you know it's like yeah I went and I lived there but it's like what was living there actually like I mean you gotta have a fucking house in China you gotta go to supermarkets in China like that's gotta be the weirdest deal right yeah well that was that's what was good with Dave Ellis he had all these connections that organised all that stuff for us yeah so right. when we got there we walked straight into a house we had a we had uh, transport that would get us from the park home it was pretty easy other than the language barrier yeah like, okay. I, I went off first school I didn't even know how to say no <laughs> how or do yes? you say no in fucking Chinese I think it's mayo <laughs> no <shit>. mayonnaise <laughs> yeah i'm pretty sure it's mayo that's so funny i can't remember it was a while ago now but yeah then you start that's what was the hardest part you didn't even know how to get in a cab where yeah. you tell them to go I, so that was the hardest part was it weird living in that realm of like because it's a pretty it's a weird life to you go there you just get paid to ride yeah and then you got this house with like these other aussies but there's no one else around you that really speaks english like it's got to be a trip right yeah well it was like if anything it gave you anxiety because re- you realize how far away you were yeah. from home but um yeah i was over there with a few other aussie boys so it was fun and it was cheap we partied and you know it was it was a good life but yeah i was kind of had a crash and then it, i was like oh it's my ankle's pretty sore but it's not broken but i'm going home yeah okay. it's my way out you're over it yeah i was over it how long were you there for uh 10 months it's a pretty solid stint really yeah it was enough <laughs> <laughs> it was enough it was more than enough yeah was yeah. it was it fun to party over there yeah it was sick because it was like 10 bucks so you can drink all night with a booth at a club really and well, was it like it was clubs? pretty much it would have been like 45 bucks and it was sick was it was the girl situation any good over there no good was oh there was s- russian dancers but oh, they were all snapped okay. up with the russian the other russian dude dancers and you probably don't want to fuck with the russian shit. nah not at all all the dudes 
Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's the, the fucking, yeah, yeah, the yeah. whole Russian thing. You're yeah, just like, yeah. oh, maybe I'll just leave all of this alone. <laughs> yeah, nah. Well, I had to, I took my chick over there. I traveled, like, dragged her around, so. How did that go in your, in uh, China? Uh, with her, it was all right. <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> nah, it was shit. Oh, I, was gonna say, I <laughs> can't see a chick being that pumped move. on China. No, no, no. Dude, I've done dumb shit, though, with chicks. Yeah, I, yeah. Used to, I used to, like feel like every time i come back to australia for like three years i had like a different american chick and expected the same res- <laughs> uh, different result i'm like you're a fucking idiot dude you gotta stop doing this but i i i, I don't regret it now it's yeah. like you know you learn from that that kind of shit so oh fuck yeah you yeah. gotta do it yeah, eh? yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah. be a dumb you gotta, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe <laughs> a couple of times more than this the once but. yeah no fuck i feel you trust me every time bro <laughs> i'm like no this monster chick is gonna be different <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. Nah, <laughs> it's nah, they're, they're, same. nah, they're, nah, they're different. <laughs> oh, this, this, no, I swear she's different, bro. <laughs> oh, fucking funny. And then, so was that after Europe? So the Germany thing was first. China was first, and then you went to yeah. Then I come home. And you're like, fuck it. I feel like we can make this work a second time. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I wasn't with her. I was single up after China. <laughs> that's how. <laughs> that's how good it went. <laughs> anyway, got home. Had a few crashes. Broke my wrist real bad compound my femur that oh. took me out for probably how did you do that so my my good mate luke wilson i was speaking about we were um riding at his track at pimp my where they had yeah yep with reardon and that yep, yep and um we were just riding around he was building this double that went downhill was it on the motocross track or the yeah, motocross track? Track? yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. i'm like oh i'm done i'm gonna go i'll do by the time you drive the bod bobcat this old stitch up yeah bobcat up to the car i'll do a lap and then that'll be we'll meet there at the same time kind of deal and um, it was just a miscommunication. And I come over the double, and he was reversing up the bo- bobby and fuck off. Yeah, straight into the back of the bobcat compound theme. I tib fib broke my hand. Oh, bro. Yeah, I like died three times in surgery. What? Yeah, like come out of surgery, and you know, like the things that they stick down your throat yeah, to try yeah. and get you going again, and all that. Yeah, they were like on the side. I was like, yeah, it was a trip. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, gnarly. what was the complications in the surgery then? Um, I, I can't even remember now, to be honest. But um, yeah, apparently they're like, yeah, we lost you like three times. We had to resuscitate you. How old were you? Uh, like mid-20s. Yeah, yeah, 23, 24, I think. Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah, yeah. So that was a big one. That 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 knocked me out for probably 12 months. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a hard one to come back from, eh? And I cancelled my insurance like three weeks before it. Good, Good move. Could, yeah. So it worked out. <laughs> so why did you I just couldn't afford <laughs> it? Couldn't afford it. Fuck, yeah. that's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. Dude, cool. Robbie Marshall, didn't he have you on, on that combined insurance program back then? Tim Farrell, actually. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> I, so actually, good. no, I lie, because I, I didn't actually... Oh, that's amazing. I knew they worked for combined, Yeah. but I didn't deal with them through, like with it. Yeah, I didn't okay. really know those guys then. Yeah, right. So, but once I knew that they worked there, that's how I was like, oh, I'll try this combined thing. Yeah, okay. Mm. Dude, I remember, um, yeah, they were fucking doing that shit like pretty pretty yeah. heavy it was fucking that, good though like, I heard they were killing it too a, yeah a lot of, and a lot of people use that shit yeah, like yeah. that that was like the best little marketing scheme ever like because he was because Tim used that like that money to start his fencing business and now he's mm. got like a fuck yeah, like he's killing it now well he's like you probably lost about a hundred grand <laughs> what's that from like well because I didn't have insurance for my femur and that oh you lost a hundred yeah, grand for he's sure like, he's like, like it would have been in between 75 and a hundred I was like, sweet, perfect. Thanks, <laughs> so you just couldn't afford to keep paying it? No, no, because it was pretty expensive. It was yeah. like, I think it was like 280 a month or something. Yeah. At that point, I was only, yeah, 20, early 20. So I had rent to pay. I wasn't at home or anything. So Fuck, dude. It was all pretty tough. Do you remember, like, did you get knocked out or anything in that crash? Or No, no, I remember the whole thing, um, but it didn't hurt. Yeah, I, right. I remember... I was laying on the ground like it hurt but I was like I didn't really I didn't understand how bad the injuries were until I was in hospital yeah well until the ambo dude went to step over my body and kick my femur I remember that hurting fuck but why then, did you do that <laughs> I don't know just fumbled um, but then I remember just passing out and then waking up in hospital oh so you passed out when he kicked your femur no nah, no nah, just they after put you it pretty yeah much like they gave me like the, the yeah. ketamine and that and then I wigged out and then went into the chaos went into the chaos <laughs> 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 it was most weekends. Oh, uh, wasn't wasn't in surfers, but uh, oh, that's fucking funny. Uh, so then you, how long did you spend in hospital for that whole deal? Um, tw- I think two weeks. Fuck. Yeah, that's a hectic one, eh? Fucking yeah. Luke. 
<laughs> yeah, fucking Luke. He's still my best mate, but we're still real close. I'm taking him with me to Monster Cup next week. Oh, sick. He's a good dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he'll come and do film it and do yeah. all that. Yeah, so. he started doing all the filming and stuff. Hey? Yeah, yeah. He's kind of stepping away from it now. Yeah. Because he's, him and his old man and brother have started this new business up. Yeah, right. It's like they're the only guys in the country that have it now. So yeah. can't quite remember what it's called. But um, but yeah, they're just chasing that at the moment. Yeah, sweet. Mm. Um, Yeah, so I guess it wasn't like too crazy of a thing like with this whole x games and then nitro world games and then x games norway like so it wasn't that big of like a travel culture shock to you right no no so i was i was excited for it i wasn't like nervous about it so no i'd done a fair bit of traveling beforehand so i was ready for it for sure yeah because that can definitely be because if there's like you just at your level you can't have people like something that takes you out of what you're there to do right 100 percent yeah for sure and like i'm big on like jet lag so i'll try and fight that so i don't when i get there i don't have it kind of deal i'm yeah massive on that what are you doing to sort of try and stop that you just try and sleep when it's nighttime there yeah and it, when it's daytime here, you just run well when it's nighttime here, you're meant to be awake so i only do that for like the day before yeah depending on the flight i'll try and book the flight so it's like you're flying through the night and you can sleep and when you get there it's morning so yeah, you, yeah. it doesn't really affect you but yeah jet lag is killer especially like when you got to get there and go sh- straight into practice pretty much is that what happened with norway yeah yeah pretty, yeah because i feel like norway would have been the bad one right yeah norway was pretty bad but i upgraded me and mcneil upgraded to business oh really so we slept the whole way we had this sleeping tablet so we were gone we were like talking to each other on the plane and we had two of them <laughs> we're talking to each other we started like slurring and like <laughs> dropping into the seat i'm like <laughs> i think it's working bro yeah yeah and i'm like you know your eyes just like fuck uh, dude i took uh what did i take fucking I can't remember whether maybe it was Ambien. It's like the American sleep. Like that's like the gnarly. I think that's what I had. Yeah, I'm so sure it is. Yeah, they're gnarly. Yeah. So I had one of the, one or two of those on a flight back to Australia once. Yeah. And like you know, on Wolf of Wall Street, where they take like the sleeping tablets, but then they stay awake, mm-hmm. and then they they just get fucked up. Yeah. Like I just couldn't. I couldn't. The sleep, loots. Dude. Was it the loots? loots. Yeah, quaaludes. The that's quaaludes. What they were. I've never had one of those. But yeah, <laughs> no, I had neither. I had two of these Ambien's, and then like because I used to now I can sleep on planes for whatever reason, but like dude fuck back in the day like when i first moved to america and was doing the back and forth yeah i just couldn't sleep so i took two of these ambience men and i was fucking off my head dude like i just remember hours and hours <laughs> of this flight just being completely fucked up but not being able to go to sleep and i think i ended up going to sleep finally and like the chick had to like the hostie had to like shake me to wake me up or for brekkie or just for landing uh for landing i missed brekkie i missed (laughs) the whole thing dude like i was fucked we'd already landed and the chick was like she was like oh you haven't filled in your passport ticket you haven't done like any of that shit and i was like fuck and i was all flustered and i was still just so out of it it. i'm so glad it happened in australia because if i did that the other way and i had to go through customs fuck dude i already had enough dramas with that shit like let alone adding that into the mix i was fucked everyone goes on about how like it's gnarly going through customs in america and it's probably easier than any of the countries i've, I've ever been to really every time i go to la it's like you what are you on though are you do you have an athlete visa or anything like nothing, that? nothing just an esther how does that work with like you having to declare all your tax and shit like that well it's just it's it's done already with the sports commission ah so whatever whatever prize money you earn you you get it into your account after after tax yeah okay. so they've taken it they've done it all already so you don't so have you to don't worry about have it to fuck with it don't yeah. have to fuck with it at all what's the rate for you guys with that shit 30 percent. that's not that bad mm. could be worse eh? it is when you earn a like a, a shit ton yeah oh yeah or like you earn like you yeah like world games you you pay heaps it yeah. sucks what's yeah. the prize money for world games uh 25 us yeah okay. it's the same for all three of those okay cool yeah that's pretty good money then yeah, too. Yeah, but then when you pay the thirty percent, it's fuck all. Yeah. Oh well, it's it's like eighteen thousand Australian dollars that you don't ever, you won't ever see. Yeah, and like, what the fuck did you? Yeah, it's kind of gnarly, dude, because it's like, what's taxes supposed to go towards? Like fixing roads fix in a know, country that i don't even live in yeah i know like you've got no fucking need <laughs> yeah, for yeah, these you're, services you're welcome. at all yeah, yeah it's yeah. like here you go take yeah. my money might as well just throw it on the fire pretty crazy actually yeah, yeah. Yeah. i think there's i was speaking to clint moore he, he's got his head around it a bit so i'm kind of still all new to it all yeah so once i yeah, it's a good problem time goes on. yeah yeah 
<laughs> like, how the fuck do I launder my wedding? <laughs> yeah, hundred like, percent. Uh, without paying taxes. Are you um? Are you, have you got it in your head like that you want to move over and like do any of that shit, or do you think you're gonna stay put and just keep sort nah, of doing I'll, what works? Or? I'll stay put here. Um, obviously, I've got everything I need here. Like it's the, t- the I feel like the more as time goes on, the flights get shorter. And like to fly to the US is pretty easy it's now. Fuck all, and really. it's like what a thousand bucks and you're there in twelve hours. Yeah. It's easy. So Bill I was speaking to Bill Co about that same situation. I'm like, is it worth me moving over here? Like I can move over here if I want to. He's like he's like, What for? Yeah. He's like, You got all your shit back home. You got your compound, you got your quarter pipe. He's like, There's actually no quarter pipe setups of other than axles and Berrimans. Yeah. It's not like, Oh, I'm gonna move to America, I'm gonna come and ride your setup with you. Yeah, yeah. Every week. Yeah. So I'd just rather have it at home. I liked my my routine i got yeah go out there i really only ride with one or two people once a month yeah so i hit everyone up but everyone's either busy or i ride during the week to get away from movie world so yeah i ride with like luke miles and sometimes marshall and that but um yeah i'd just rather stay here do my thing i definitely the whole moving thing like it just takes it's the biggest time suck yeah like i look back at my time in america i was there for like fucking eight years or something and it's just like now i just feel so fucking far behind yeah, yeah because i moved i'm like dude where all that time just went i should have just it's hard to say like i should have just stayed here but it's like for the amount of time i was there like that's a fucking huge chunk of your life when it's like i couldn't have done what i did there here but it's like i don't know hindsight's 2020 20, i guess but well, like it's just the time it takes out of your life eight years well, i did two years in europe and that was enough I was like, got back, and I'm like, man, everyone's so far advanced. Yeah. Like, because I didn't save any money because I was busy living, like <laughs> trying trying to see all the countries in that. Yeah. So I kind of come back with very minimal savings. And then everyone was like, you know, almost having kids, buying houses and all that. And I was not even anywhere near that. Yeah, that's sort of the same sort of place where I was at when yeah. I come back. I was just like, well, fuck it. What am I going to do? But it's, it's weird, though, <laughs> because it's like, that's where the podcast come from. Yeah. So it's, I guess it's. What am I going to do? Works out. Yeah, because. And I didn't want to just come back and be like, because there was so many people that were filming, yeah, and there were you know young dudes that had spent a ton of money on cameras, and they yep. were working for people I used to work for, yeah. Okay. And I felt like I could have come home and just been like, "Hey, man, I'm back. Uh, let's just fucking pick up where we left off." And it would have just been the biggest dog move to like all of these people that had trying to get of, into this. It, yeah, exactly. And I was like, "Fuck!" I just feel like it, it's just like not the move, you know. Yep. But that's what gave birth to this is that thing i'm just like i've got literally nothing to fucking do so i might as well just do this for a bit until i figure it out but everything happens for a reason eh? it's i live so eh? highly against that like i'm not against it towards that yeah everything happens for a reason like if something bad happens like well you know it is what it is it's obviously happened for a reason so just kind of embrace it and i'm the same i think that the the big thing that like because when something fucked happens like it's fucked like yeah. you break your femur yeah, yeah or you you know what like there's stu- definitely stuff that is fucked and in the moment you should be pretty upset about it but i think there's definitely what i've learned over the years of like having a lot of shit go tits up is that it sucks but you've sort of got to have a bit of faith that at some point it gets better and it's like okay right now with my leg broken on the track or in hospital or not being able to ride or whatever like let's just not get too mad because the situation hasn't played all the way out yeah yeah for sure you know and it's like the way that you are now with like quarter pipe it's like whatever happened back then and moving and moving back or whatever Mm. it's like well this is what it was supposed to play out for oh the best not at the time it's not the best thing that happens to you but now when i look back i'm like oh i'm kind of thank that i went through that because it kind of made me realize how important it is to like be appreciative of how good you do have it yeah like when you're laying there with your leg broken or anything like that or any injury you know i find that i've thanked them to well I, i'm just pumped that i went through it yeah. because you know it makes you a better person on the on the other side i find well like dude cody Mackey's like a good example of that right like he was so fucking good on a bike like yeah. one of i think one of the best riders australia's ever produced yeah and he breaks his femur at cool I was there that day. Were you there? Yeah. Fucking heavy, Because eh? that was right after he'd broken it. That was his first ride back, wasn't it? Or was that... That was... So, he breaks it at Coulomb. Yeah. Spends basically 12 months rehabbing it. Had heaps of problems. Yeah. Breaks it. He comes back. I think he raced the round before Coulomb. So, it was wherever it was. Murray Bridge or fucking whatever. Newcastle. Raced there. And then, then he went back and raced Coulomb. 
And uh, go, dude, click in his IMBD. Actually, let's fucking give Cody some love. We here, talk man. all the time, me and Cody. He's the he is the man because he's obviously moved to America and doing the whole stunt thing. And yeah, we chatting all the time. But yeah, so he does he does the fe- first female, spends twelve months, but essentially races one race, does good, goes back to Coolum, and in the exact same fucking turn, bro. No, it was the same. I turn. didn't know that. It was the same turn. You're kidding. He d- literally, I. I feel like i want to say the track was running backwards though oh like, okay you know how they yeah, alternate yeah. it yep so i could be wrong i'd need like i'm sure he'll tell us yeah yeah but uh so it was either yeah i think it was running backwards same turn fucking basically the same thing happened broke his femur again but it's like we're about to read his imbd and if he didn't break that fucking femur the second time and won that race maybe this page doesn't exist like well, yeah yeah well he had because he had a rod in it right yeah he did. i heard that like because he bent the rod and they had to like pull this in I, I, that he had to like open it they had to open his femur up and they like chisel, cut it into sections yeah and and chiseled the bone off the rod or whatever Gnarly they're the stories dude. that i heard but gnarly yeah no thanks but yeah so this is his fucking what's this 25 credits at last stunt driver we can be heroes stunt double to christian slater jungle cruise stunt performer top gum maverick stunts previous whatever the fuck it's that stacking says. up swat goliath ford versus ferrari ncis ncis mcguiver mile 22 pacific route like what the fuck bro pirates of the caribbean stunt performer stunts hacksaw ridge like for, for this situation it's perfect example for how much op- but like opportunity there is in america gnarly huh? and, mo- and putting yourself in a position like cody has in the hub of it all and look out like look at that list right there that's perfect list of putting yourself into the hub of it all and it all paying paying off like he moved over there with his whole family and shit yeah that's a big step but obviously it's all paying off and and then it plays to like exactly what you said you know like you think that breaking your femur for the second time in the same turn like a kook <laughs> like, would be, it would fuck be the it, oh, fuck it. would be like the dude i remember i i don't i can't remember if i was there but i remember calling him or him calling me or something and like he was devastated like it was like that, in the hospital K-hole. bro he was <laughs> massive <laughs> that's deep but like fuck. now you know what i mean like if that didn't happen who's to know what if all of this shit happens so it's like just I, like that's my biggest thing is like let the situation play out because it it's all like, happens for a reason fuck it does man it's, yeah. and if you the reason why it wouldn't work out is if you just fucking get the shits yeah yeah pack and, it in yeah and give up exactly yep and it's like you know your story Cody like anyone that's successful anyone that's living their dream has had to go through that fucking a shitty shit. deal yeah yeah 100% and if they turn back and decide to live a normal life or take what whatever's easy or yep. you know turn to fucking drugs alcohol whatever it is it's like you you fucking don't know you don't know if two x games gold medals are on your horizon and that's what you're walking away from like exactly. that's blind faith yeah you, you put it all in you back yourself pretty much and if you're not willing to back yourself then you, you turn around and you go home pretty much and that's that's, that's a lot harder to live with than a broken femur right? yep 100 percent um dude the the stunt stuff like like when did you start the whole d- the driving thing because like you're an insane driver like that's what you did at movie world before you did the bike like when did that like how did that happen yeah so after i went to china with dave ellis and did that contract and then i come home went through all the injuries and then i was kind of like exactly what we just spoke about i was just like depressed i was like fuck what do i do now i'm like i didn't know if that opportunity was still there because i left my contract early because mm. i was hurt i'm like oh man what do i do so yeah i pretty much either spoke to, i think i spoke to a guy called mark cato he was looking for riders and we went back to germany and then we did the riding for a year come home went back for the second year had no bikes just had cars so we were in a car park at the front of movie world in germany learning how to two-wheel cars really so I was there, we were there for like a month before the show opened, trying to learn how to two wheel cars and do all that. And obviously it all went like, it all went pretty well. And um, did the show there for a year, just driving, doing minor bike stuff. But then that's when it come home to drive for Gary at Showtime at Movie World here. So I've been there for seven years now, almost, I think six years, six years. Um, and then, yeah, that's how I kind of, I met a guy called Paul Phillips. He, um, man, without meeting him, who knows where any of my, stunt stuff would have went because he's like dude you gotta get graded you pretty much 
got to get qualified. If, until so he, he was the one that like put you on the path of like put doing me on it the properly. path. He was like a coordinator. So he put me on the path. I went and got graded. Like it's not easy to get graded these days. It's like because there's probably a lot of dudes trying to do it, right? Yeah, it's it's like a eight months of solid training, re- filming yourself, putting application in. There's only three three times a year to put the application in. No way. Just so you can be graded, so you can work TV and film. Yeah. So anyway, I got that. And I've been graded now for like three years, doing minor stuff, TV stuff, some movie stuff. And then um, me and Dan Reardon, we kind of got together because like we're the only two guys in the country that can ride. And, and do the car and stuff. And do the car stuff at a certain level. Yeah. So we kind of put our heads together. We're like, oh, well, let's um, kind of, let's put something together that we can offer to TV and film. Um, stunt driving and riding at a, at a level. Like everyone can either ride yeah. or drive at a certain point, yeah. but we're giving um, like all the coordinators and film like a level that there's not a lot of people in the country that can yeah. do. So yeah, we decided to um, you know, create the drivers. So it's going pretty good at the moment. We're filming um, filming the promo video in December. Um, and yeah, did it's going to be sick. Did you guys just went away to like Dubai or some shit? for that no, no so I just went um, over there for a holiday because my missus was working fuck I there. lose track of your travels these days <laughs> so it's fucking hard to keep up she um she was over there working so I just I met up with a guy um who is like the head driver out at the track out there and he's like just come and drive he's like come over drive and like I hadn't met him yet and he's like just come out and drive so I went out there and drove this Ferrari 458 no like five laps thing like slicks like two I think we got 265 down the straight like it was sick <laughs> Like it, the car had so much more in it. That's as fast as like that straight would allow us. Yeah. Um. But yeah, went out there just just like it was a four day little trip just to get away. Yeah. Because I just got back from America. Just got back from Vegas. Just Vegas. Got back from <laughs> being back with all my mates, so we were all partying, like living it up. Yeah. And I was like, I got to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we went away. I went. Yeah. So she was over there working. So I flew over for a few days, and I met him, did some driving. But yeah, we've um. So you only got five laps in that car. Yeah, five laps. Fuck. so that's like two warm-ups and then three three so heaters it was way too quick yeah like, I bet. it's so good man it's sick fun but um yeah so the drivers is kind of something that we'll showcase more towards the end of the year so the, the sh- like we, we're doing really well just on word of mouth yeah um but yeah once we get our promo video together we got some really fucking cool ideas so it's gonna be sick hopefully we'll release that early 2020 Dude, it's fucking hectic how much shit that you've got going on. Yeah. So, like, my driver's move was, like, my retirement jobs. And yeah. I'm just going to try and do as much as I can in my riding. For I see it as, like, a five-year window yeah. to really make the most out of it and make a name for myself. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Five years of just solid, just put put it in and then see what happens. And then the drivers and movie world will be just waiting for me. So the is the the show at movie world is that like a pretty solid thing like that's just not going anywhere do you think no nah, so gary at showtime's like cemented his name with like village road show pretty much fam like families like doing really well so it's solid i've been like I was, we've been there for six years now so I, so I see it there for probably another 10 years at least yeah right we'll have a new show soon the one that we've been doing has been pretty basic just because when we had bikes we had a few crashes move yeah. just wanted to just calm it all down for a little bit yeah so we've calmed it we've had that show for four and a half going on five years now i think so it's it's definitely due for an upgrade but that's the thing with theme parks you just got to be patient because they're always going to have a new show so i didn't want to like shoot myself in the foot and be like oh i just want to do casual i just want to ride more yeah because there's only so much riding that i can do every week yeah i can do two solid days and then i'm like either hurting from riding quarter pipe or i'm just like brain fucked yeah there's not like like i said there's only so much you can do so if i step away from movie world, i'm just gonna be find myself sitting around the house yeah doing nothing or just doing stupid shit so i'll do five days there and then ride on my days off you'll uh be coming into the pink monkey and fucking <laughs> yeah <laughs> and what else would i be doing <laughs> yeah no, no you're so right i got dude. mates like harry bink well and grant yeah. bink that'll just reel me in the uh, mayors of burley <laughs> But that's what they say, Pretty man. An, an idle mind is the devil's playground, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for real. For real. Like if you want to, uh, yeah, if you you want to stay out of trouble, you got to fucking be busy. Yeah, and you got to get out of off out of Burley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, that's so good. So this is this Paul Phillips dude. So this yep. is so he's got fifty four stunt film credits. Yep. That's fucking pretty gnarly. He's been doing he so he. He's been doing it as long as a Peter Pan movie, the first one. He his son was doing that. Like he, the original, like Hook. Yeah, he casted his son for Peter Pan back in really fuck. 
Was that in the 90s, 90s, bro? 90s? Yeah. Dude, that's yeah. one of my favorite movies of all time. That he was on movie. it. Yeah, and he casted his son, Jesse, for it. What What did his son do? Um, I think his, Jesse was the young kid. Oh, his kid was the Peter Pan kid. It's the double. Oh, Sorry, really? yeah, not the, yeah, 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 the yeah, stunt yeah. double. No way. I'm sure it was. That's yeah, I'm pretty that sure. That is cool as fuck. Like, yeah. That a kid like you ha- there has to be a kid to double the actor yeah, right? yeah. like you don't yeah. really think of that I'm pretty sure Jesse was so Harfie's we call him Harfie because he's quite short yeah uh, so we always give him shit but um, yeah he's been around for a long time and he's pretty successful and he's so how did person, that, that meeting because I think that was the same for Cody like it was sort of that whole once he got in on the Mad Max thing and then it was like who yeah. you sort of know and because Cody did not just the writing stuff he's like fully qualified for like stunts and rigging and shit now right yeah, so yeah, he's yeah. like going super deep into super it super deep yeah so um what were we just talking about like how did you, like how'd you meet this guy yeah like, so i and met then so, sorry yeah so i met um Harfie at movie world and then that's how he kind of he directed me yeah, into that right. like getting qualified in that but yeah. like we were talking about it's like once you get a role on something you put you put all your effort into it and you just keep it rolling and shit starts to fall into place like cody with pretty much after he did uh what was that one we just spoke about with johnny depp um uh, pirates, pirates. Yeah. pretty much after pirates he was like on yeah, a roll on and that's where the whole why not move to america because yeah. it was all kind of happening it's the same with me once i kind of got the got a few whip comps under my belt and it was all kind of felt good and it was happening then it, it, it all rolled on with momentum do you feel like um you, you sort of realized after you said like a few whip comps you do a few things that the industry starts to feel a lot smaller than what you thought it was before i for sure um after oz x in 2017 like it, it that definitely was my step in but yeah it's it's the industry is completely different to what I thought it was going to be. What, like. did, what did you think it was going to be like? Before well, you, you see it, it, you see it with like on well X Games and all that. You see it like the money or back in the day, remember like Twitch, Hood Rich, and all that yeah. stuff. You know, you'd see it in the movie, like money and cars and houses and stuff. Like, yeah, it's all there as long as you do good. But even after winning like these few gold medals and stuff, I'm still finding myself trying to figure out how i'm going to get this person on board or because i need this certain thing like uh, those people haven't reached out to me yet not that they should have but uh, you'd think that they probably would yeah like we're we're going the highest anyone's ever gone on a dirt bike you need the best possible equipment you can get but i'm still finding i still have to fight try and reach out to these people to get it yeah i don't know i I thought that it would have kind of all just come in running with the way the sport's going like freestyle motocross it's all kind of been the same for the last couple years quarter pipes like the new thing and i feel like it's just getting started there'll be i think there'll be a lot more competitions to come but yeah i expected it to be a little bit different yeah but does it feel smaller though than what like because that's the thing i would always I'd always think like you need to know five people in any one industry and then you're pretty well fucking good. Like even so motocross, like I was a kid in Australia and then I was filming and I knew one dude and then I knew two dudes and then I knew three, four, five and then I fucking knew everybody. Like yeah, I yeah. could get to everybody and I, that blew my mind. I was like, damn, I just felt like it was so big yep. and so far away and it was like hundreds and hundreds <clears throat> of people that you know it'd take like years to get to know all of these people and then i was like that was like one isolated thing and then towards the end of my time in america i started getting super into golf yeah and i was right. doing heaps of golf filming for red bull and the pga tour and like that was actually the first podcast stuff i ever did was with golf yeah and it was the same sort of thing where i was like i knew this person at cobra which is like a golf manufacturer mm-hmm. and then they knew like everybody at all the other golf manufacturers and then i knew this one dude at the pga tour and then he knew everybody and then yep. i knew like ricky fowler and then because i knew him i knew every and it just felt like the whole ind- it like everything just became a lot smaller i just want like because from here you, you feel like it's so far away but i just was curious to see if like you had that same sort of feeling well my key guys was joel whittaker statsy from rival and sam moore i felt like once i knew those guys i mm-hmm. knew everyone yeah those guys have like opened up a lot of opportunities for me that i'll never forget and um yeah like like you say like once you'd went, met one person it definitely felt like it shrunk everyone in and you knew everyone as long as you knew this person you you'd meet that your next person they'd be like yeah. oh your mates with joel yeah. your mates with me kind yeah. of thing yeah 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 i thought it was um 
yeah i was kind of like i'm i'm funny i think it's i'm funny in my ways like once i don't really go out of my way to try and meet all kinds of different people yeah. once i got my crew yeah all the people that i like i keep them and like i feel like i don't need to meet anyone else especially when you meet like sam and joel they know everyone so yeah i don't know yeah that's how that's the way i see it anyway yeah no it's definitely it was yeah it's interesting <laughs> because it, it is pretty new you know and like obviously you've been around like knowing like the showtime dudes and, yeah, and yep. stuff like that but like yep. you sort of once you start getting a bit deeper into like people signing big checks for you and yep. like actually you know fucking making shit happen yeah well gary gary is a big he big, would, yeah, big he one to think too he's, yeah he knows everyone but he's helped he helps me out and like still does help me out a lot obviously he's my boss too but he for my bike stuff as well he's goes above and beyond for that stuff like i'm riding at um brisbane this weekend just to come and ride there what for they also had show the doing shows there oh at the supergrass yeah he's like do you want to come and ride i'm like sure why not so That's i was just gonna, gonna come out and ride there do just do a few whips before opening ceremonies but yeah he's still like looks after me with bikes and obviously gives me a job so him yeah. and the same with robbie marshall like yeah i mean i could go on all day about people that have helped me out and that i know um but yeah there's just like five core guys yeah it's fucking it's cool that you recognize that so early on too like there's definitely people that have gone like tried to move quickly and then just like want to get the a team straight away and want to be like in that you know that top tier friends group and like because in every industry there's like the socialite sort of style yep. thing it's like if you're hanging around these guys then it's like you you kind of mean yeah you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah yeah it's like it seems like you're not sort of do this try to do that no nah, no nah, like i still live up in Maudsland because it's close to work but also because it keeps me away from the party scene keeps me from making stupid decisions it's close to riding like I, I don't have days off so mm. it's hard for me to go and step out and either come down here and hang out with like the boys but I'm just kind of set my ways it's working now so if anything I'm more strict than what I have been because mm. it's work now so I want to obviously next year will be big because I've got the target on my back so I'll be putting 10 times more effort in than what I have been this year. When does that prep start then, do you reckon? For you? I've already kind of started. Yeah, really? I want to lose a bit of weight, obviously, so you're a bit I lighter. I was say nothing, but... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Truth hurts, bro. Yeah. Fuck it, let's get down that. Exactly. <laughs> nah, so I, want to, I wouldn't mind losing a little bit of weight. Obviously, it's che it's a bit cheaper than putting pumping 10 grand into an engine. <laughs> well, fuck, dude. That was like a big thing at... um but jdr because we had malcolm and he's a big motherfucker yeah yeah, yeah. and like he would whenever he would complain about the bike yeah jay would be like all right cool man i'll uh i'll get 10 grand worth of titanium but uh this is your meal plan for the next six <laughs> yeah. months and if yeah, you yeah. do that i'll do this yeah yeah and they're always at this fucking thing because i think it's like a kilos of horsepower really on like it would a 250f be. yeah, yeah. Five, like a 450f for sure yeah 450 is a little bit yeah, different but yeah. like still like when you're playing with like gearing and fucking ignitions yep. to get like that top rpm it makes sense that the weight would help 100 percent, right? yeah so weight reduction and power so yeah it's already started like i'm training to elevate i've always been training to elevate the one that's just up the road here nah so i'm um, in coomera oh, upper yeah. coomera is yeah. that the same as the one that's here though nah no 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 so he's oh, the okay. only one he's doesn't have any franchises all oh, right but i've been training there for probably a few years now my good buddy luke whittaker he runs that place owns it um, oh dude i know yeah i've fucking been you know there. Yeah, for I've, sure yeah i've been there yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. that it's already started i'm already looking for like looking forward to 2020 um we're putting obviously a lot more r d into engine chassis so i'm working close with a carbon fiber company um yeah and then obviously engine we just got to try and make the fastest 450 to ever be built yeah like, that's that's when you get your height did, so. did josh hill ride that crazy fucking thing that yeah he that built? 68 horse whatever it was fuck that thing's a beast or did you yeah. see the edit he did in the hills yeah how he went up that what that step fuck? up or whatever it was that yeah, thing sounded gnarly. vicious dude <laughs> yeah i'm pretty sure he had it at minneapolis there was a bike there sitting in the corner that looked like off its head well that's what i thought that he would have rode in half by right but he's probably not at the technical nah, like, quarter pipe he's thought, probably not had enough time to like need more right? no nah, i thought he would have rode it in step up because he was in step up ah. so i think that's why it might have been there but yeah we'll, we'll try and make a pretty quick 450 like for a next full year. beast mode one yeah yeah definitely because everyone will i'm kind of one this year so everyone's going to come out swinging next year yeah so i would be trying to be doing the same um have you got into like the groove with training yet to where like you're frothing to go there oh i love it yeah yeah, yeah. Like, i i put too much pressure on myself 
like I go to train but just for a mindset so if I don't go to the gym twice or three times a week before I ride I feel like I don't deserve a good ride yeah. so I have to go like but it's too much pressure so now I'm taking like a different step I'm on a meeting plan with Fit Fuel Plus and I will kind of back my training down a little bit so it's not so much pressure so that if I only train twice a week I won't feel like I don't deserve a good ride I'll still yeah. feel like I deserve a good ride so yeah it's funny how I work like that if I'd, I've got to be in the right mindset yeah yeah mm. yeah you definitely um you reach a point with training where it's like you just sort of have to go yeah like that's kind of where I'm at with jiu-jitsu like this last week for me was fucking gnarly I'd had like a month off pretty much after the Aussie titles because we did that trip up the cape and yeah, stuff yeah yeah and then I got back and like I just knew how bad it was gonna hurt and I mean obviously look at my fucking face <laughs> but, but like you know you the writing's of, on the wall <laughs> <laughs> like you know that's what yeah. you're, you're in for oh after the six weeks away for X Games and yeah. all that obviously you've been here on the road yeah my first um, my first uh, session back was not good not good no it's fucking no, no. brutal eh? yeah and then you saw i didn't go for the rest back. of the week because i couldn't walk the next day yeah because you go back into it you're like i got this i'm sweet and then i woke up like the next day and i pretty much couldn't stand up out of bed so took the next seven days off <laughs> <laughs> no no you did the right thing yeah. <laughs> well that's like this week i went every day by f- i think i had friday i was far i couldn't i couldn't train friday i kind of hurt my back wednesday yeah but then so like but even then like i thursday morning like i hurt my back wednesday night had like hot pack ice uh hot like heat and ice on it all night yep. stretched all night like laid on my fucking foam roller for like hours because i knew that i <clears> had to go at nine <throat> back still wasn't right didn't really want to train still trained f- took friday off and then trained again saturday and it's like yeah you just there's a mindset that you get into where it's like you just fucking have to go and yep. it's like i was never that guy and i i didn't like I struggled to find that like even when I was racing and stuff mm-hmm. and it's like I just wondered if you'd got into that same zone because well, it's super rewarding when you're there yeah well Luke was open for two years and I hadn't gone one session and he's like <laughs> one of my best mates he's like when you come down I'm like I'm not like, <laughs> I hated shit. it yeah. I hated training I didn't want to know about it but then once I started going and the vibe that's there and like what he made like just how you feel yeah. after going like you just said like my, I was addicted I was like man I feel awesome like I'm so clear like I'm just I know what I want I'm straight, so sh- like straight down the line now so yeah I, I love going there now it makes a massive difference yeah like does, when, when you can really really dive into it and I've been fighting like a few like little niggling injuries for probably a good 12 months now like I had a crash at Adelaide step up with Dave Ellis oh in yeah, practice. yeah 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 and i busted my ankle up pretty good and it wasn't broken but it's just like ligaments and tore ligaments off the bone and all that and i've been fighting them oh. all year and then i was doing a thing for seven years um and i was real windy out of the compound one day i was riding quarter pipe yeah and i like knuckled it and something popped in my ankle and i just <laughs> I still haven't gone to get it checked <laughs> because i just haven't had the time yeah because my my physio um jeremy he um he's like you gotta get it checked so we can get it get it looked at or get something happening for it but it's like it feels like my ankle can dislocate and just like i can't put any weight on that side on the inside or the outside outside yeah i feel like it's like a tendon that holds the vein on the bone but now the vein just kind of flicks around the bone oh i've got that in my elbow dude yeah like literally fucking i'd extend my elbow and it just like yeah it goes flicks around over. the bone yeah yeah that's I've exactly got that. what happens in my elbow got that in my ankle man and it's been fighting me like i got a couple of torn rotator cuffs so it's been like going to the gym and trying to be motivated it has been tough but it's yeah. still still made me want to go just being there at elevate do you do um a lot of like massage shit on yourself like with like massage balls and stuff not at all fuck dude like good. i cannot tell you how good it is really like when you get in a routine like basically he's like a roller nah the nah. massage balls like the shit dude really? the roll is good mm. and i i still do use a roller but i've got a it's a lacrosse ball yeah and i say it to everybody like there's a million fucking spiky balls there's all these like different i know what you're talking about yeah it, yeah yeah this lacrosse ball it's like a i can't even remember who put me onto the lacrosse ball but um anyway it's like it's the shit it's the perfect density it's a perfect size you can get it into everywhere and like for your shoulders and your ac joint and stuff like what i do is i get get the ball and i find like a, a right angle wall and i'll put my the ball on the shot on the wall and mm. then i'll put my shoulder into it about sort of like chest height yep and then your head's on like the other side of the wall and you just fucking lean into it man 
and like you do it everywhere do it on your shoulders do it on your hamstrings like i lay on the ground at night when i watch tv and i just rotate like my hips and it just frees everything it's not like that big eh? yeah it's small it's like the size of a tennis ball but it's like this soft rubber yeah yeah right but yeah like dude that that shit and like now that's like that's like one of my guilty pleasures in life is like watching a movie and just the whole time just like this self massage just sort of moving around and you get to know like like i've got my right hip hip is tight yeah so like i'll lay down on this ball for fucking ages on my right hip and it's like the more you put into it the more you get out you get out of it yeah you'll get so much more mobility and like and then you mix that in with stretching like it's fucking insane dude so that's that's like like a huge with the injuries man it's massive massive well that's why my physio hates me because he probably tells me to do all that stuff but i just don't do it Oh. I'm sure everyone's like that. You know, when you yep. get told you got to do this. Yeah. Man, there's so, so much shit that I just don't do. Well, and I got... like, I'd love to, I'd want to do it, but I just... You've got to get it going. And, yeah, 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 yeah. You just want to go home and sit on the lounge. Well, that's the thing Sometimes. though, is like you can do it, like this is my sitting on the lounge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I pretty much just do it now. Whilst you're on the lounge. Yeah. Well, yeah, I right. do, I'm on the floor in front of the lounge, but it's, you know, yeah, I'll put yeah, on, yeah. I can, then I don't feel bad about watching YouTube or mm. fucking Netflix because I feel like I'm still in something. You're working, but relaxing kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Because yeah. what, what got me was I went to the, um, I went to the physio in, um, in the States. My back was fucked. I was like, I thought, I thought I'd like bulged a disc or I thought I'd done something like really bad. I was like, yeah, I'm fucked. I stopped had to stop filming i had to stop everything to like fix my back yeah and basically i went there and um the the doctor was like yep your your ham your left hamstring is completely locked up and then you've got like all this um uh, like uh these knots that are sort of turning into like scar tissue around your shoulder yeah, yeah. and then it's just like so you've got the left side down low and the right side up top and it's just fucking your whole back yeah yeah and it you're was, like out of proportion it was from the camera yeah right so like holding right up so it was like a repetitive stress injury pretty much yeah 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 and then so and i was in america i was freaking out like it was so bad i thought i was gonna have to go home like to get it fixed is that how much pain you're in it was dude i I drove i went surfing one day and i had to pull over i had no one else with me i had to pull over and fucking lay on the road on the side of the highway because my (laughs) back was like full spasming i couldn't fit i couldn't use my legs and shit yeah it got like crazy and it was just because of always flying always yep. driving like la traffic all the time yep then i was flying and then all my bags were super heavy that i was carrying through airports, airports and, and then yeah, yeah, filming yeah. all day like everything was just like this compounding effect yeah right but anyway long story short he basically got me one of these lacrosse balls and um and someone else had told me about it before and i was just like yeah no that's oh, i should look into it and then uh <laughs> but then he basically just said like you have to do this with your with your left um hamstring and then blah 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 and dude now it's just like it fully just changed my whole yeah right my, health, my whole outlook on like like servicing your body it's yeah fucking yeah crazy dude well, i i my back's killing off and just flying the last couple of flights like you know how you just like you just want to like get comfy right now, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 you just want to get comfy yeah yeah my back is still sore just from a flight back from dubai yeah you get man youtube's like the craziest place for yeah um, i hear that eh? finding like all this because now i just go full nerd zone on like mobility and all this like different yeah, yeah. shit like flexibility and like the more that you see well this is like one thing too i've started talking to people like that come on the podcast or athletes i know i'm like can you do the splits and they're like <laughs> don't oh. even ask um no they're like not not all the way but like pretty close yeah, yeah. and these are like really good athletes yeah yeah and then there's like the average person and mm. they can't do the splits and it's like doing the splits is like this common trend among like super flexible people like even toddy today like todd yeah, was yeah. here and um i was like oh how flexible are your hamstrings and then he like he bends over and puts both his hands flat on the floor in front of his hands in, in front of his feet uh, in front of his feet yeah 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 like that's fucking flexible so it's like it's what, this palms down palms down in yeah, front right. of his feet yeah, yeah. and it's like that's a common trend amongst <laughs> all people that are really good at their sport yeah yeah and it's just super overlooked yeah yeah hundred percent so it's like but it's just a like a mindset sort of thing that you and you got to get, get into, into it too yeah, by you, day. yeah. and yeah, then yeah. you but I find that like for me like nerding out on shit is what gets me into it yeah yeah yeah. so like the same way you nerd out about your suspension yeah yeah okay that's it that's what sucks me in like i have to sort of go into a rabbit hole and then find out like i think the trick is like finding out how much you don't know about something i need someone like i need someone to 
like Jeremy, my physio, I need him. To, like he does tell me stuff, but I need him to be like, look, listen, yeah. you need to fucking do this. <laughs> like he'll tell me to do it, but I won't take it on board as serious. So. You're right, eh? There's like and a I'll, level. Yeah, there's a level. It needs to be past that level for me to be like, shit, I probably should probably do this. Yeah, so no, I'm just waiting for it. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Are you, what else are you not doing? Yeah. yeah. Do you have you have a list of other shit that you're like, okay, 20, 2020, this is my year for this shit. Um, not really. I'm pretty much just in the gym, bike stuff. Uh, that's pretty much it. Because I don't want to overcomplicate it because mm. it worked this year. So just kind of ramp everything up that I've that I've been doing. It, yeah, that must be like a bit of a like like a conscious effort that you've got to make now. It's like okay, this because would you say this was like the best year you could have ever like had? Well, yeah, best case scenario, the way I had it in my head for sure. Like I would have loved to have been. I was almost, I was pretty much, I was pretty close to the medals in Norway for whip. Yeah. But I would have loved being in medals for whip for both. But yeah, if, if I was in the medals, it would have been perfect. But um, yeah, it still went awesome. Perfect and, scenario for quarter pipe anyway. And so now then, that must be like <laughs> a, a not a weird situation, but then that's like something definitely that you have to deal with now. Is like okay, so how do I not fuck this up yeah. for twenty twenty? Yeah, yeah. So like we put so much into quarter pipe last year, so now it's like okay, I need to like split it down the middle and put a little bit more into whip it's just finding the setting i just struggled with the setting for whip after we put so much through the quarter pipe bike was too stiff it just wasn't doing what i was telling it to do so now it's good it's kind of a bit of it's good that it's happened because now we're just chasing it a little bit more and yeah. we're learning as we go because like there's no it's how many people are doing quarter pipe in the world yeah no, no there's no. only a handful so um yeah it's just trying to it's just a learning process do you want the whip stuff as bad as you want quarter pipe? Like, are you just a full 50-50 split on them or... Full 50-50. So you whip, like it the same? Yeah, yeah. I like quarter pipe more, but yeah. I, I, I'd i I'd love to be to win golds in whip too because whip's like where I kind of come from. Um, you know, it's just, it's such a unique thing to be able to do a big turn down. Yeah. It's such a fine line of, it's like, you speak to probably any freestyle motocrosser that they they're more scared of doing a turn down than what they are doing a backflip yeah right because there's just so much that goes into it so much commitment so yeah it's I just want to kind of put more effort into those more time anyway and trying to get some medals in that that's such a violent um, impact too like if you don't like if you fuck up a turn down and land sideways like that's a really violent crash yeah or just like land backwards <laughs> yeah it's, it's 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 cool it keeps it keeps you come coming back for more because it's such a fine line so it's it's um it's yeah Mo i've had like the two weeks before x game sydney i had my bike cut out just doing a moto whip and i went straight to my head seven ribs what yeah i was in hospital like eight days before x game sydney the biggest competition in my life oh last year yeah dude i remember that hey that yeah. was gnarly yeah so my first ride back from that crash was practice on saturday yeah that's right at x games so it's just like whip is so gnarly but it's just something that's so overlooked i yeah. think like compared to like yeah like i said before you ask any free summer across the day think it's just as gnarly as doing a backflip yeah well do you think that like fuck, is that dog doing do you think that um i think one of the things with like why this quarter pipe is so successful and why best whip is so successful from like a ratings business mm. x game standpoint is that it's like it's so fucking easy to figure out yeah like that dude just did like a very uneducated crowd can decide the winner of best whip and can visually see like oh well he went 35 feet or 50 feet or what it, you know what i mean the next Whereas, guy's gotta go high to beat it exactly yeah. like it become and then there's like a there's like a pressure thing there's like you understand and it's mm. like it's one jump it's one hit it's one run at the ramp yeah to, it's like well it's 50 50 he's either gonna win or he's not gonna win whereas with freestyle and doing the runs and even best trick it's like oh do we re like the crowd it's like okay a double backflip that might look crazier than a body varial but it's like the body variable might be harder and yeah. there's maybe there's three dudes in the world doing this and there's two dudes or one guy like there's so much at play in a sport that is judged like freestyle well step up is like the most watched discipline because it's understood so easy there's a bar there it's opposite limbo there's a bar there then if you yeah yeah if you hit it you're out yeah. or if you go over it you move on to the next round whereas it's kind of similar with quarter pipe there's not a bar there but you see that yeah. see it on screen 
and uh, like same with whip oh yeah okay they just got to try and do the biggest whips or like it's just it's cool to watch whip yep. i think that's where where whip is still in it but with freestyle it's so gnarlier than any of that stuff but there's certain points that go with certain tricks so it's hard for the general public to know what the run's about and how gnarly the run is yeah but they see a double backflip they're like oh, like if you don't know bone you're like oh cool surely they've been doing that for years yeah. that must be pretty easy yeah and then you see a whip they're like oh that was cool that, they, that dude like just pretty much went backwards and got it back to the landing they, they rate a whip just as high as double backflip yeah. when it sucks because the dudes that do do double backflip so much commitment you can die <laughs> so yeah it's it's um for freestyle compared to step up and that that's where it loses out which is unfortunate because man some like all those guys like sheeny and jacko and all those guys that put everything they can into freestyle to be kind of like just similar yeah to step up and well then, less people watch it than yeah than or step less up. yeah it sucks yeah and i think that, that like i've never cared about step up mm, yeah i'm a hardcore moto dude i've yeah. rode my whole life i'm like nah it's fucking yep. circus trick. Yep. Like they might as well be riding around in the fucking ball of death <laughs> with a chick <laughs> juggling. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like that's what it is to me. Like that's like a carnival event, which su- like it's no disrespect to anyone that's won that medal. It's no disrespect to the talent that it takes. It's like, it's fucking legit. But in turn, like I'm just don't feel like I'm going to, like I feel like it's an egg and spoon race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, For sure. whereas yeah. like a hundred meter sprint is a fucking hundred meter sprint. Yeah. So, but I can get behind the best whip way more and i can get behind the quarter pipe way more as like a industry guy yeah yeah, yeah. and i think that that is why x games is gonna push the quarter pipe stuff so hard and the whip stuff so hard is because it's like it's so easy for the fans but it's like super acceptable to the hardcore guys too whereas i think that they're from this is for my own split anyway is like I just don't think Step Up's cool enough for, like, the hardcore fans like myself, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, quarter pipe's new and exciting. Whips is cool because, like, when you're a motorbike rider, the first thing you want to do is learn a whip over a tabletop or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, so, when it, yeah, Step Up, like, I, I'm i on the same – I feel the same. But, like, as high as, like, Jared and that are going, that's, like, another whole different respect because I've, I've, I've now, after riding Step Up, I'm like, oh, how hard could it be? So, ride into that thing, seat bounce, try and go as high as you can. But now after riding Adelaide, I was like, fuck, this is actually pretty gnarly. And it's super gnarly. And like, cause, yeah, you see it on TV. It's like anything. You see it on TV, like, oh, it's just a lip. But when you get there, you're like, okay, it's just a lip. Yeah. It's, it's just, like, a <laughs> six-meter high lip and you got to get off this thing. So, yeah, for someone looking out, it's not definitely what's cool, but now that I've ridden it, I definitely have a lot more respect than what I did have, for sure. Yeah, I, and I, I know, like, how gnarly it is, but I just think in terms of, like, a like acceptability into, like, the mainstream of, like, where you look, Action sports, yeah, yeah. like, you look cool doing it because yep. it, it's, yeah, it's like, you know, playing limbo at a party. It's, like, it seems more like a party trick. There's, like the bar there there's the yep. you know you've got to get the fucking dorky ass sticks to like move the bar you know what i mean yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. it's just not it, cool in the traditional sense of action sports it, that's just sort of how i feel it, it's it's funny like we got high jump um, i've always thought that maybe they'll introduce like a long jump where you start like a step up you got i think it's Dude, six, be pretty cool. six meters and you got to go up and try and go over the bar but if you had like a six meter run up you had to like seat bounce this thing and try and get as far as you could that'd, that'd be pretty sick because i've been saying i'm like that's how that, they got to market something they need to have something so yeah. step up is that something but there needs to be something new obviously everyone's always looking for something new be sick to have like a long jump dude they uh <clears throat> this has already been done at the innisfail rodeo <laughs> festival and i'm not even fucking joking if you go on jackson's instagram it'd be like a ways back but they all do every year at this site. I'm pretty sure it's like the Innisfail Rodeo. And they, um, nah, just go to Jats's Instagram because that's fucking where all the cool shit lives. Um, <laughs> but he, uh, they, yeah, they do that same, that sort of thing where it's like a pretty small lip. And then they, um, they just fucking sent like, but they don't have a six meter run up. They have like a 600 meter run up. They're just, just fucking send, just sending it, bro. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jats. It'd be a ways down. Jats. Jats. What could you say about the guy? Zadziki and Jats. There's not much to say about old Richo that hasn't been said. He hasn't there? released his deal yet. I was giving him shit the other day. I'm like, hurry up and release your. Do you reckon he's sponsored by Rockstar? 
Pro- don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the fucking worst kept secret ever. Uh, yeah. Where is this thing? We've got to go through and see this. It's fucking all time, dude. Sure. Oh, now nah, go back up. It had to be past. I've it. heard rumors of. Th- oh, good photo there, mate. Is it? Yeah. Right. I've, I've heard rumors of stuff at X Games. It's meant to be coming. Obviously, I can't say, but it's. No one, it's, no one even listens to this, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, but it's like, it's it's always that thing. Everyone needs something new. There's yeah. always going to be something new. So it'd be sick to do a long jump. Like, it's the same kind of thing. A horsepower, six meter run up. Yeah. How far can you go? How high can you go? It's the same kind of deal. So, Fuck, where? I really want to show you this video. It's fucking all time. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it was just on his story. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, it'd be, it'd be cool. Like, it's sort of gnarly with X Games though, like, because they give birth to so much stuff, and then it seems risky to like put so much effort into something that comes from an idea. A, yeah, like X Games, because it's like the Supermoto thing. Like there was fucking factory teams. There was yeah, like yeah. so much shit that Rally. went into it. Yep. Rally was the same. Yeah, and then it's like, nah, ratings are fucked. It's clipped. It's gone. Like yep. that's got to be like heavy, eh? Well, I don't s- think that quarter pipe is going to be like that. Nah, nah. I think it's because it's it's just as I think it's the second most watched so far. So I've been told. I'm not yeah, sure. Okay. sure 100% I'd believe it hundred percent. Um, but yeah, look, like I was just speaking to the organisers there, just full steam ahead. So uh, hopefully Europe will kind of jump on board next year. We'll have a few contests over there, and then I'd love to showcase it here. Yeah. Um, Where do you think's the right spot to do that then? Um, I got I got a few ideas and I got something in the works. Um, but yeah, it's something that's hopefully in the next twelve months we could have have it here for sure. How was the um? How has the organisers been like? Because obviously you're nobody until you're fucking the gold medal dude. Yeah. So it's like, how has that been then? Like working with those guys, the organisers, and like sort of getting into like the bar behind the curtain sort of look at this whole deal every one of them have been awesome like i when i went over for the practice in paris in 2017 i think it was um for nitro world games dave mateus a guy that i met there who's actually yep. brothers with steve mateus who's rock star that's yep. how that all came about me and dave just uh-huh. cl- clicked we man we were like mates straight off the bat and i was riding good and that's how rock star kind of came about and he is he kind of looks after all of Nitro stuff. So he did history stuff with uh, Axel. Uh, yeah. He does Travis's stuff. So he tells me, he's like, Travis comes to us with an idea on a napkin that he sat at a bar, had a beer. Like, and, um, or 20. The, yeah, or 20. <laughs> so that's how the quarter pipe come, come about. He like, apparently wrote it on a um, napkin and gave it to Dave. Dave's, and he's like, Dave, let's do this. So that's how the quarter pipe kind of, kind of came about, apparently. Um, but yeah, like working with um, Eric and Mickey, who are the guys that look after do X Games. They're doing Monster Cup next week. They've been awesome. Like my first year at Minneapolis this year, and they've like the same as all like the like Axel and Colby and Tyler have all just welcomed me in with open arms. And I feel like we've just formed this relationship straight away. Everyone's super cool, so super inviting. It's been awesome. With the the rock star thing, that's the in action sports that's the thing that you got to do is get an energy drink sponsor like for a guy that went from no support to being like rock star's main dude how does having an energy drink sponsor change your life as an action sports athlete well it'd be obviously 10 times harder to try and get places and get around the world um but it's it it's opened up a shit ton of opportunities i've met a lot of people through steve and rockstar so yeah it's a bit of it's definitely a blessing you know i always pinch myself i'm like oh man you get like paid to have rockstar on your bike and turn up to competitions and have fun with your mates so yeah it's huge it's um like it's like the sport these days is pretty much monster energy financially backed so so like logistically though what is what sort of possibilities does it open up to like to have that rockstar logo on your helmet because like i know from dealing with red bull and the stuff that i've done with those guys for so long it's like you know with berriman like when berriman got hurt like him and steve shearer like fucking best mates that's his team manager at red bull yeah it's like they you become like family with these guys at these energy drink brands because if you get hurt they're the ones that are the ones calling the hospital or they're the ones calling the surgeon or with tyler it's like he's going to the red bull house uh the red bull facility to do massage and physiotherapy it's like 
I just I don't know if people realize just how big having an energy drink sponsor is for people like yourself. Yeah, well, they you looked after really well, and like you said before, I come kind of come from nowhere. Well, I've come from hardly any backing, so without Rockstar, you know, I might not have even been able to go to X Games. So, like, without them, it's been you know, it's helped me out massively. And yeah, they're, they're, you are like family. Those guys have just like kind of taken me in. They're like, whatever you need, let's get it done. Like they've helped me financially, obviously massively tra- traveling to X Games, Norway and all that. So yeah, it's been, it's, it's been good. Does the, um, does the movie stuff that you do and then when you work in like such like massive operations, does that stuff like give you a different perspective on the whole um like what it's like to be legit in like a business and working for yourself and shit like that yeah well obviously tv and film is um massive isn't in itself but working on set it's like you have to be um set savvy otherwise it's 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 actually like anything if you're not a good person you don't get especially in that business if you don't um if you're not good to work with and a good dude you just won't get hired so when you're on set you know you take it you you know you take it um under your wing and you yeah you embrace it what what's the like coolest experience that you've had doing that movie stuff so far or the tv stuff um probably the super cheap auto ad that was just oh, released with Al? yeah with uh no it wasn't with alan it was who was it with it was a um, production company called taxi oh we dude just, i've heard of them yeah we just did the pen right the new oils thing oh. um it it was cool because it was actually my first like proper bike crash on film was so, that the one where you sl- like had to slide and crash? Yeah, slide and crash. It was. Sick. Was that on your Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Can, yeah. You, can we look at that bad boy, me? <laughs> so yeah, how so, did that all go down? Yeah, well, that's my first one, that, and because you need to crash like proper. Yeah, but you you ride your whole life trying not to crash. Yeah. So it was like, okay, you know, you're gonna come in and um, and just crash in front of this camera and don't go any further. Which one? Keep where going down. It? Yeah. That one there. Um. And you got a mark to stop on. I'm like, you can't let the bike go past this point, and you can't slide any further past that point. So you got to judge that. So they're like, you need to come to us. You can't go any further because there was a forklift there. But yeah, it was that was probably the the. I don't know. It got my blood rushing just as much as riding a really? quarter pipe. Yeah, yeah right. Because yeah, yeah. I think Emma McFerrin was saying that she did one and like it was yeah. the same thing she had to crash and she's like this fucking sucks like I'm everything in my body is telling me like do not crash this don't, don't crash yeah I even put my leg out like natural instinct and I like fell on the ground and it just it, the bars like crushed my leg and it fucking hurt <laughs> yeah because I always think that like the dudes that do you see them in the movies like the guys that will fucking jump onto a uh, like the front of the bonnet and yeah. then smash the glass it's like and then roll off yeah like they're fucking doing that yeah 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 like they're yeah. actually doing that and they're very minimal like they've got hardly any padding on well, you, because you can't really yeah you got to look like a normal dude you're meant to look like you're getting actually hit by the car so because get, you are getting yeah you are getting hit by, hit by the, car. the car so you know <laughs> that was my that was the coolest one i've done so far like the most of the stuff that we do is like commercial stuff for big car companies and that stuff basics like just driving over a log or just driving forward or just show, showcasing the car in a good serenity so that yeah. stuff was cool yeah to like actually sort of step into the yeah yeah the step into it like, shit. like we were meant to jump up to this set of stairs i was meant to jump the bike onto the stairs and then ride up and jump off and you're like mm. but the stairs were like just as narrow as the bars after i got off the ramp or oh. we didn't do it um we didn't have the time but i was freaking for that one so like, you, you were just gonna do it yeah i was like, i'll kind of oh well it's <laughs> got to do it um but that was just that got me going just as much as what it would be right at the quarter pipe i was freaking have you heard cody's story about crashing with the imax camera no nah. so he i uh, don't take this exactly word for word because like <laughs> I, it was years ago they told yeah. me but in mad max they had like this jump where they wanted like a because it was all shot on imax so they they wanted to like mount the imax camera to the handlebars yeah, yeah. and then um he had to like hit this ramp and then Cody's there telling him like, I don't want to be that guy, but like this won't work. The camera would, would surely it was would like have fallen 50, off. Fifty? No, they bolted it, but it's like a fifty kilo camera or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, like, you want to hit a ramp, 
with yeah, like a, something 50 kilos on your bars he's like D- it's just not like this shit won't work like yep. i'm telling you and it was just like ramp to ramp nothing in the middle so then anyway he's just fucking he's like well i'll do it if you want me to do it but <clears throat> it's not gonna work out it's not gonna work <laughs> like it's not real and then he just went <laughs> oh, over the bars yeah just fucked the whole thing oh fuck <laughs> no i haven't I mean, heard I have to, that story yeah. i'll have to text him and see if it's allowed to actually say that <laughs> <laughs> but like fuck wow. bro, like heavy eh? that wouldn't fuck the camera yeah but like there's there's definitely a line where like they're trying to get the shot and it's like they that, like a lot of those stunt coordinators like probably wouldn't know exactly what's possible in the same way that a writer would right yeah well half is good for that because he's been around long enough so he knows what's possible and what's not possible yeah but most producers or directors are like can we do that and you're like yeah and then we go and do it or some guys are like why don't you just do that and you're like because it, do it. It, it doesn't work yeah and they're like well how doesn't it work you just got to go from there to there same thing 50 kilos in front of a bike or same situation yeah some guys just have no idea and they just expect it and it's expected for the wage that you're on for that day yeah you're like you want me to start doing shit like this and we need to talk like for extra money because it's dangerous now yeah there's a line where you pay me up to a stuff where it's pretty good pretty like sweet but then there's a line of like stuff that's dangerous and yeah can like affect my other work death yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is let's avoid yeah 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 well i gotta to go to india in like a couple of weeks to crash a bike under a semi-trailer fuck that's meant really? to be moving what yeah but how'd, how'd that gig come up um pretty much just through the drivers yeah right. yeah, yeah, yeah so it's gonna be pretty gnarly i don't think the trailer i don't and probably won't let them let the tra- trailer be moving but um it's gonna be pretty cool <laughs> Go, just timing yeah no, like, I get, we'll be right I like real yeah. I've all, seen for the, it, all for the show real I've seen it in the movies bro yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> you just don't see me get killed on, on film do you um, do you have like a new like when you watch movies and you see shit like do you have like yeah. a new appreciation of it now yeah well I pick at things yeah, you know you pick at shit you're yeah. like oh yeah you've seen like something they did wrong there or you just look for shit flat out all the time I'm hardly even watching a movie I'm just watching what shots or how they're doing shit it's cool yeah yeah that makes sense yeah is this is that like something that you think you're like really going to go into as, yeah, yeah as like the quarter pipe stuff and like yeah. the career side of it goes 100%, down 100 yeah for sure so we for the drivers we'd love to have like a core team that supplies it all around the country well we can do that now but we want like certain teams in different states and um film and tv is massive here so yeah we're it's just, crazy now eh? yeah so we're just trying to punch into it like I said before, like it's all kind of, we're doing really well with just word of mouth at the moment. Um, but once we release this um, promo video in December, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty gnarly. You stuff think that, that'll take it like, yeah, to the next level? Yeah, there's stuff that probably you don't see anymore or it hasn't been done. So it's going to be cool. Can You don't want to talk too much about that shit or? Oh yeah. So it's just like cars, two wheeling people on top of two wheel cars, you know one of those freestyle drones flying into the car whilst yeah. it's driving you know bike jumping over it wheel tap crashing cars rams um fire burns just stuff that's like it's been done but just feel like there's directors and producers or anyone anymore just like a don't try to like step outside the box yeah it's all really just like safe safe yeah so we're just trying to bring it back so it's just cool shit yeah 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 i suppose like and especially now too because we're living in like that vfx era yeah like where you can sort of do everything on a camera but or like in the um like they're not doing it in the camera essentially yeah. but it's like it it seems like there has to be a uh like there is those cycles where it's like so much shit just gets done fucking green screened or yeah, yeah, like yeah. with the cgi and it's like yep. it'll come back around to like actually doing actually cool shit, shit like yeah. stunts yeah. yeah so we're just trying to showcase that and say that it's pretty much show that it's not dead here yeah and that we're their team that can provide it and that you're safe with um hiring us to step outside the box and step over the line to do cool shit yeah because i think that's where it comes from like there's there's don't they just don't think that people can do the shit that they have in their heads anymore yeah because you don't see it anywhere yeah like where do you see it? like a a car that crashes and goes 200 meters down the road end to end like you don't see that shit anymore yeah unless it's in hollywood yeah are you like like how do you guys practice that shit so we've got a tool car we've obviously got my ute my blue whale so we'll, we'll try and drive that as much as we can we've just finished building a two-wheel car yeah um, so just, what's the deal with those so it's just it's just like lock diff um suspension yeah 
just pretty much building a ramp so we just like put this bmw together that we're going to um start two-wheeling and have a bit of fun and probably drop an ls in it so it can do some drifting yeah um, so we can use it to its full potential um yeah and then we're trying to like just get like a uh, camera bike together and heaps of cool ideas so it's, yeah yeah it's cool. how, what's it like doing the two-wheel thing is it easy to do is it hard to do no nah, it's actually re- really hard and it, it fucks with your head a lot because really yeah because it's such a fine line of getting it but it's so hard to get to that fine line but once you're there you're like fuck how, why did it take me so long to try and get this in terms of like commitment to it yeah 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 because like you feel like, like when you get really steep that's where the fine line is but it feels like you're gonna fall it's gonna go on its roof yeah so you gotta push past that push past that barrier of finding that line and either putting it on its roof for the first time and then realizing oh that's where it is and then trying to drive yeah. out of it and because you drive drive the car so much through the accelerator like to to speed it up to steepen it up or yeah. if you slow down too much it just drops it down it's it's tricky it's cool it's so unique too yeah i mean fuck like it's it's like the opposite of again it's like the opposite of what like you spend yeah. your whole life sort of trying to do is keep a fucking car on the ground right <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so it took it took me a while it took me probably like three weeks to get it good and then trying to turn and left turn and right turn that's when it becomes tricky because then it's the car goes steeper and there's whole it's like a whole nother level so as it doesn't get done very very often here in australia i used to do it at movie world yeah but they pulled it out so it's it's yeah you don't there's not a lot of opportunities to see it or do it does this shit come easy to you like the car side of things and like are you one of those because it's sort of it's weird right like Mackie for instance like you look at Cody it's like he was one of the fucking best dudes to race a dirt yeah, bike yeah, yeah. in Australia ever like he did that so good well, and he's the only guy to go and ride with like Stuart and shit yeah remember like that era at, yeah he like lived at Stewie's house man that was sick like he's he was so fucking yeah, good I'm, at racing yeah, yeah. but it's like you know then you think that oh, oh yeah like for sure he could be a stunt man but it's yep. like you it's like obviously you have that with like the ramps and the quarter part thing but like to not be like the gnarly good pro racer like it see it just doesn't seem as likely as what it is with cody but like does that shit come really natural to you when you're like doing the two wheels or the drifts and stuff like that well not really like it's it was always hard to learn it but it's just with being in like live show stuff you got so much time to practice in yeah, between shows okay. you just get the time so like when it, when we went doing shows i'd go out and try and just w- try and be better or try and learn two-wheeling or i'd go out and do wheelies and all that kind of shit like it's just you get the time to do it whereas when you're a racer or you don't have that job like i've had you don't you don't think to yourself i'm gonna go buy a two-wheel car and try and practice two-wheeling yeah or build a ramp a specific ramp for two-wheeling you don't think about that shit until you've got someone who's provided it to you and you can do it and then you can have it at your exit like you've got at your disposal at your disposal to do it whenever you like so that's where i've been able to been lucky to have those opportunities and learn it and then obviously try and bring it into the drivers dude your life is just a fucking perfect storm of you just taking advantage of every fucking thing that you've been given yeah it's like that's the theme here dude i get man travis pastrana is like my one of my idols i don't know if you remember in one of his movies it's like i just never want to work a day in my life kind of thing yeah Yeah, i live so highly against that i just want to i'm the same i just don't want to ever work a normal like a real job from working a real job back in the day so that's just where i got my my motivation from just try and yeah maximize every, every opportunity and see where it can take us it's so hard like dude i take shit for granted every day like and i really i actively have to remind myself like that's why i've been gnarly with like my schedule lately and like really trying to be organized and really like if i'm in the office i'm working and yeah like i'm just you can't fuck around because it's so easy to get to like say this point here it's like i'm i'm doing the podcast full time but i'm barely getting by but i'm doing it full time like yeah for like for me this feels like enough Mm. but it's like when you when there is no coast point there's no cruise there's no cruise control of like success you know you never really reach a point and even though i'm comfortable with this like if you get comfortable and stop it dies it goes away you don't have it anymore so it's like it's so hard to consciously even then when you get what you want like i don't want to be a fucking billionaire yeah yeah, yeah. like i've got what i want i get to do the podcast and i fucking live here and, I and have you're a good happy time. yeah and yeah. i'm happy but yeah. it's like that isn't enough yeah. like that doesn't mean you have to stop grinding like you need to keep grinding and i think like i think that's why successful people 
reach like really crazy heights when they do stuff like a Travis Pastrana or, yeah, yeah. or where you're at now. It's like it's because you probably got to a point where you're like, look, I'm doing this shit for a living. I'm happy. Yeah. But it's it can't be enough. It was now it's it still is even to this day. I've like you said before, I still take shit for granted. Like I'll be at movie world some days and I'm like, fuck this. Like for what? And then I'll be like, fuck. What do you you know? Day late or whatever, I'll be like, fuck no. You don't. You need look what you're doing. But only because like you do it so often and you get a bit bored of it. But then you got to, yeah, you got to realize what you're actually doing. But time goes so quick these days. Like, dude, right? Like twelve months is like two weeks. Like not even that these days. And like it's like what we're like eleven weeks out from Christmas already this year. Like that's there is fucking, fucking Santas in Bunnings, bro. <laughs> yeah, Kmart as well. Already like lights for the Christmas and shit. Isn't so you that need, retarded? It's retarded. So you need to like take advantage of everything that you're doing right now because if you don't and you like have that fuck it attitude, your life's going to be gone. You're going to be having kids and you're going to be, you know, it's all going to be over before you know it. It's so hard though to like find that balance between stopping and smelling the roses and yep. enjoying what you've achieved and, 100%. and like being satisfied but yep. also doing the exact opposite of that and just grinding again yeah 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 like x games felt like yesterday for me but it's already been like almost two months it has been two months since minneapolis isn't it yeah you're right eh? and it's like crazy. that's the danger zone right yeah 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 is like you get off the back of kicking a goal yep and then you take you know two months goes by like that and you're like fuck you haven't gone any further for yeah, me it's just like stepping stones yeah. i haven't progressed in like two months and i'm like kind of wigging out i'm like fuck i haven't been in the gym or i've only ridden this many times i've i'm like fuck you need to get your shit together <laughs> <laughs> it's funny though like because dude i feel that exact same thing like and I, you know, you always will have people that say to you like, oh, dude, this is going great. I'm like, and even I've found myself like when people walk in this studio, I'm like, fuck, I oh, don't even look at it, dude. It's not done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's like. It's you, not at where you want it to be. Yep, exactly. Like people are like, dude, this is sick. And you're like, it's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, nah, man, fuck it, this is going to get done. We're on the right track, but we. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's like what you, sort of like what you need, right? Yeah, but again, 100%. there's you got to have like a balance between that shit. 100%. Yeah, well, that's when people are like, what are you going to do now? You, what, you, you've done everything that you've set out to do. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But what about backing medals up? That'd be cool. What about maybe, you know, um, winning some gold medals and whip? Or how about, you know, podium at monster cup monster cup x games minneapolis were my biggest ones to ever go to yeah so i've just grinded for them so it's just a trip even to think i'm like, riding at monster cup next week so in my favorite city vegas is my favorite city you know, not for the partying but just for the city what, what do you like about vegas just so like, many people don't like vegas really no yeah. i love it there's so much shit to do there's always something happening you walk out in the street some dudes in a bikini or some chicks in bikini like it's this weird shit some fat dudes laying on the ground trying to get money like it's always interesting or it's always just funny so it's never a dull moment there that's, or even just the old shit the old Vegas town and that there's always something to do yeah dude that's so, like so many people just uh, just don't like Vegas that's yeah, yeah. crazy like to find someone that, and obviously like the partying but you know you can only party for fucking oh, a day 12 Two hours days a day there. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> 12 hours a day dude when we first moved to the states like we knew fucking nobody and then uh, we would literally drive it was only like 4 hours from our house so we'd drive to Vegas me and Jay then we'd talk business the whole time or like dude we had times where we, i used to do edit stuff so we'd like we'd film and then we'd edit so we'd like all right we'll go to vegas for the weekend yeah and then i put a generator in the back of the truck and then you know like the trucks in america they got a little square in the back window yeah yeah, yeah. So sorry like, that opens up yeah so yeah. i'd open that i'd run a lead through and i'd have my laptop charger and all my hard drives and shit running off yeah. this generator <laughs> and we'd fucking edit the That's whole sick. way to vegas yeah it was so good post the video in the hotel yeah and then fucking hang out all weekend in vegas do like a little bit more work plan for the next edit job and then drive home do any extra editing that we needed to do yeah, yeah on the drive yeah and then like and then we just start our week so dude i fucking probably went to vegas like 35 times in like the first two years that i lived there like we just went there so and we, we didn't really party that much but like i was the same i just fucking i just liked going to vegas like it was just super fun to me i don't even live there and i've been there like seven times this year <laughs> this year how have you been that well, many times oh nah sorry nah see that's how quick time's going because we went two on a years. trip last yeah. year yeah yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. we went to we were there in america for a month and we went to vegas five times just because it was like our kind of destination where yeah, we fly out yeah, of yeah, yeah but then we get there we're like 
Ah, fuck, fuck it, it let's just go for a two nights. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then this trip, we were in and out of Vegas because you drive straight past Salt Lake. I mean, yeah. Vegas was Salt yeah. Lake. And then we went back there. Vegas was just like you couldn't pass it <laughs> yeah have you done the um have you done the machine gun thing at vegas no fuck off really you've so never that's what done i mean that. the see so, like even gary reed's like dude you gotta do do this i'm oh, like oh bro i haven't even fucking heard of that shit look up machine gun vegas it is this fucking place is like the biggest trip ever there's hundreds of them dude so like it's literally just called machine gun vegas and uh Wait. every every time anyone um so they've got like I've been there fucking so many times dude so you can look at the packages you can get bro yeah I haven't done any of this shit so let's what alright so dude I love the fucking marketing of this shit too right the Bonnie and Clyde a, a <laughs> the sauna, hand job a sawn off shotgun an MP5 a Colt Commando 1991 a Desert Eagle like what fucking Bonnie and Clyde experience is not complete hey. without a fucking Desert Eagle but yeah so like you literally then they got like the SEAL team fucking thing um the where's the ar-15 dude i would just fucking go and hire ar-15s like that's like the um weapon of mass destruction fucking device of choice in america but like for good reason bro that gun is so fucking good i don't know my, my guns eh yeah i'm not a huge gun dude but i would go to this place every fucking time but yeah this fucking uh this place man you just go in you pay money you sign your waiver yeah and like yeah that you shoot like four or five big fucking guns dude down the range and then they've also got this uh this zombie game where like you have real bullets and you shoot it to the oh that's uh dude yeah you shoot a fucking 50 cal dude (laughs) how gnarly is it where is it just outside Vegas, though, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's like in Henderson, man. I'll like go there. Right there. Oh, yeah, I know what Henderson yeah, is. Yeah, it's fuck all, dude. Dude, <laughs> for $1,650, you can, you can shoot, shoot out a machine helicopter. Out of a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking America, bro. Vegas. But yeah, for real, that, that's what it is. Vegas, like, yeah. So many people go there and they just get so fucked up. The strippers take all their money. They fucking <laughs> do so much coke and then they're like, I fucking hate this I'm place. Yeah, yeah, then 24 hours later, let's go back. Yeah. <laughs> but like, dude, I've seen Vegas beat the fuck out of people. Like, they just get swallowed up, dude, eh? Have you seen that... Um it's, I think it's called Drugs Inc. on Netflix. Uh, bits and pieces of it. It's a series, right? Yeah, apparently there's more people living underground, more like junkies living underground than what there is living up, up yeah. on. Look look that up, the tu- like uh, the like tunnel networks, because they live in the water tunnels. Or like yeah. the water yeah. systems underground, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking gnarly, dude. How crazy is that that Vegas doesn't have their own water supply? Where does it, it come from? Um, Utah, I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah. Or... Uh, we- <laughs> Look at this shit, man. Like, legit fucking colonies, bro. Fuck. How crazy yeah, is it, gnarly, eh? Dude, America is just a trip. I haven't seen anything like this before. Yeah, I've seen, yeah, I've I've, seen like, that. Yeah, and, yeah, like, you yeah. can sort of see where people go in. But I wonder, like... Uh, Las Vegas loses lots of homeless living in underground. I wonder if there's any articles on it of, like... Elon Musk, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, it's really gnarly though that that whole situation. Um, they've got so many people that live in those. It's insane because people just probably fly there and just get on like a big bender and then just lose <laughs> all their money. Then leave. they just can't leave. Well, I think that um, I think that it's got something to do. Yeah, a network of sewage channels underneath Las Vegas strip houses thousands of homeless people who call themselves the Mole People. They live in concrete pits that are meant to drain water, uh, rainwater from the city after a storm. This means that when it does rain, people are at risk of having their homes washed away or drowning. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm, I've always thought it had something to do with the water where they built like this big network of like infrastructure of what you have to have for that much land or whatever to like take the rainwater away, but it never fucking rains. It never. Oh, it actually rained when I was there last. Really? Just spit it. it not enough to like run water down the drains, but yeah. The other eighteen thousand times I went to Vegas, it didn't rain. No, I've 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 been there when it snowed. It snowed on oh, the Vegas Strip for me once. It was well, uh, not for me, <laughs> just for Jace. <laughs> Jace, see a quick turn the <laughs> turn the snow Wait, on. He's here. He's quick. here. <laughs> Wait, wait, he's here. That's fucking funny. Uh, Dude, we went out. I like the weirdest night one night in Vegas where we went there for New Year's and the UFC was on or 
Maybe it wasn't New Year's. New Year's evening. It was like in between Christmas or New Year's or whatever. There was some December fight card. So we went there. This dude fought on the card that, like, me and him had the exact same hair. He was six foot, like, sort of skinny, like, fit dude. And uh, so, and then I had Jay with me, who's, like, fucking super good looking dude. And, um, oh, this 50 year old is addicted. Was it him? Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, Jay's with me, and then we had girls with us. So like, I didn't, I wasn't dressed up or whatever yeah, that yeah. that much. Jay was in a full suit, so I looked like this dude that was rolling around with like a manager and girls. So this fight ends. This dude knocks the guy out. It was like the highlight of the night, and uh, so then everywhere I went for the entire night. People were asking to take photos with me. Like I thought they were you. They thought I was this fucking dude that knocked this guy <laughs> out. It was like a highlight reel knockout. And so, anyway, I forget the dude's name, but I was having people coming up taking photos with me. I was having like people ask me to like blow on their fucking dice for craps. Like I walked around Vegas <laughs> for, for one night, and it was like the weirdest fucking deal ever, eh? And uh, yeah, it was like taking photos with people. I was getting let in clubs, like because we we just free booth. Yeah, dude, for for real. Like Sick. we went in and we we googled this dude's name, and then I was like, oh yeah, I'm fucking such and such. And then like <laughs> this is my manager, and these are the girls, and blah, and like that just led us into all these clubs. And we um we were like, fuck it, dude. Like we're having a good night. So we put eight hundred dollars on red, and then a fucking hit. No. So we took sixteen hundred bucks off. And then we uh, we fucking went on our merry way, and then we <laughs> went on our merry way, <laughs> <laughs> and then we went into this club. They there was like they let us in and gave us all the shit. Yeah, and um, then we left the club and we went back to that same fucking table and put another eight hundred dollars down on it and it fucking hit again. No, and we walked off. So we made like I think sixteen hundred bucks. Fuck, that's fucking, fucking sick. Two hits a roulette. That's like, epic. But then I think the next time I went there, I, it chewed nine hundred. I've like, not won a cent in Vegas yet. Really. Yep. Well, I haven't put much down, like a couple hundred here and there, but yeah. Even nah. after fucking winning, winning all your shit. No, nah, I, did, I, I don't gamble. No, nah, I'm, nah, I'm, I don't. I'm the same in nah, a lot of ways. No, nah, I haven't gambled at all since then anyway. Vegas was the one spot where I'd play, I'd play roulette because I just feel like you can just be a dumb cunt and play roulette fucking red or black yeah 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 it's easy to understand zones, like it's really fucking easy yep. they reckon craps is the way to make easy money I hear money. so much about craps yeah. but I don't have like the attention span to understand it I know fuck I all about fucked. it but apparently that's the one where if you want to make good money yep. gambling and you don't really know what to do but yeah, I just okay. don't see I think the odds may be better like you could win more with craps but I don't know I've never played it yeah neither but have I I, I just stuck to wouldn't know the first, yeah I just suck at gambling Yeah, I just think I know but I don't <laughs> you see so many dudes at Vegas that are like playing poker and blackjack like they know what they're doing yeah 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 you're just like what the fuck dude <laughs> man another weird Vegas story when you go to Vegas this many times like you have to have a yeah. fuckload of weird stories but it was right before Supercross and we were staying at the Bellagio and then we got up super early to get to the track so like you know you got the breakfast buffets yeah, and yeah, shit yeah, yeah 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 so we walked in to this breakfast buffet and this guy fucking had just won the World Series of Poker. But he was like 20. Fuck. And he won like six something million dollars. This 20 year old dude. And he just came in and like fucking paid for everybody's food. Just like com- just balled out in this random ass buffet. And then like he was sitting there and then there was just TV camera after TV camera. Like interviewing him while he was eating his fucking food. Fuck. That's epic. Six million. Yeah. Something like that dude. Something you crazy. Just, you just need one win. I know, and then you're just fucking done. But the, yep. what did he bet to do that shit? Yeah, true. Eh? I wonder how much he put in. Like over a career, like it's that's fuck, fuck. all. Yeah, it's, it's too much money, eh? But it's I get one of those. Anxiety thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine what you do with that money. Oh, dude, I always think that shit, oh, eh? Like, pe- pe- you hear people like blowing or spending crazy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just like you're blowing it. You're like, dude, what the fuck? Blowing it. Yeah. <laughs> And then that's you're like, all I do you're like man you could buy a house in Logan for the <laughs> <laughs> Bean Lee <laughs> but like Vegas is one of those towns where just you can just be on the street and see like the <clears throat> coolest fucking most random crazy yeah, shit yeah. happen yeah yeah and there's just so much to do like you, I feel like if you go anywhere else like in Dubai for example I did like some of the some like did the helicopter and all that shit and I was like caught myself in the room like fuck what do we do now 
Whereas Vegas, you're like, yeah. you don't want to go back to the room because you're just like, let's go here. Let's go. Oh, what about that? What about here? What about that? And it's like never ending. Are you going to do the machine guns in Vegas this time? I will now. Fuck, bro. Yeah. It's so much fun. If I win Monster Cup, I'll do the helicopter. Bro, please. <laughs> <laughs> Can we fucking make that a deal? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Oh, my. How much is the prize money? Uh, I think it's like five grand to win. It's not. It's not. It's not as much as like a X Games or anything like that. But it's yeah. sixteen hundred bucks to do the helicopter, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You down with it? Yeah, hundred percent. If I win, hundred percent done. <laughs> That's gonna be fucking awesome. I'm, I'm cheering so hard. Yeah, I will live feed it just for you. <laughs> That'd be the best. Like, <laughs> Corey Green fucking Instagram takeover. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's so fucking funny. Oh. You'll have to buy the new iPhone just so you can have someone like fucking full slow mo on it <laughs> yeah. from the bottom. Uh. They have like, there's one, I don't know if it's Machine Gun Vegas, but there's one where you can um, drive like a tank. Oh, really? <laughs> like, see if you can find that. It's a strip. Yeah, they've got like an obstacle course set up out the back of yeah. like all these old fucked out cars and you can literally like drive a tank, man. Crush battlefield vegas that's the other one i don't i don't think i went to this one i think i wanted to go to this one or maybe this is the one with the zombies because i didn't see anzac legends package australia and new zealand can now have the honor and the chance to fire the full range of weapons used throughout our heritage anzac forefathers (laughs) shut the fuck up that is amazing. Car tank crush. This, this is, is a, this is the best website. Tank ever. driver two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. you're kidding. No, not the Jag. Not the Jag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not the family man. <laughs> Get fucked. And this cunt's up there holding an American flag. Look at bro. this. Look at this dude. He's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! Sure, sure. I haven't seen this advertised anywhere. Surely you can't do this anymore. Yeah, you can, bro. Freedom. Would you rather do <laughs> <laughs> America? <laughs> Wait, would you rather do the tank or the heli? Tank. If you win, hundred percent tank. <laughs> I want to be the dude up top, just like fuck <laughs> America, <laughs> fuck, fuck yeah. yeah. Wait, you with the Monster Cup trophy? <laughs> In a with, tank, a, yeah. with an American flag. <laughs> I'd be banged up too by the time I got there. Oh, yeah, you'd be old. You would be old by that time. <laughs> Very old. Fuck, Battlefield Vegas. That's epic. Wait. I need to, I'd like to just watch it. Maybe maybe if we send this to Battlefield Vegas, that'd fucking hook it up for the homie. That'd be fucking sick. How dope would that be? Take <laughs> an Aussie flag over there and just do the fucking, <laughs> have the Aussie flag. Look at this dude. Oh, so does, does he drive it? Nah, surely, nah, surely not. not, eh? Does he just drive around and crush I think cars? The, the dude that drives it is like in the bottom, yeah, there, like be, in the front mm, bit there. Because mm. I've watched Fury. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mad Max. I mean, yeah, yeah. You watch Mad Max too? Oh, uh, that's fucking. Yeah, I'm basically an expert <laughs> at tanks, bro. I don't know if you fucking know. Oh, he must be from the Gulf Coast. <laughs> I wonder if there's, there's nah, there's gotta be nah, there can't be somewhere in Australia that does that shit. No way. How fucking so you reckon the tanks the goer? Tanks the go. <laughs> oh, I want you to win so bad. Like I wanted you to win before, but now I want you to win. Maybe I can just so ask bad. my sponsors to help me out a little bit more and just do it without winning. Dude, fuck the. F- in, if you want to talk about doing it for the gram, that is literally doing it for That's you. Like you for couldn't gram. fucking do that any better. All right, what else we got here? Fuck. <laughs> One round, ra- whoa, whoa, one round of the, wait, go up, Mick. M60A1 main battle tank, one round. Get behind the 105 millimeter main gun and take your turn experiencing the awesome power of firing high velocity tank round. 2,500 bucks. 30 minute climb of the drop. You can drive that one on the left and it's only 700, that's, 800 bucks. That's fuck all. You got that. <laughs> Wow. Oh, <laughs> flames roll. <laughs> oh, 400 bucks. That's not that bad. Fuck yeah. But like, I don't know. I feel like I feel like that's one of those things where like right after you did it, you'd be like, that was a waste of money. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I could have just got like an aerosol can I and a lot of house in Logan. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. My parents live in Logan. Fucked up. <laughs> 
<laughs> what else is on this fucking website? This we're, is amazing. We've man. gone well off track here. <laughs> no, we're on we're track. On track. Right? We are fucking on track because this could happen. Like you could win, you could win hey. Monster Cup, and then you. I think you need to go here regardless. Well, we we were meant to come back to LA on the Sunday, but uh, you're <laughs> we, extending that. Trip. We, no, we we already did, so we're coming back <laughs> on the Monday. <laughs> so we got all Sunday to do what we want. 100 rounds for a minigun that's pretty cheap 200 bucks that's alright 100 rounds man that'd go in like 3 seconds force, yeah. yeah that's fucking so over quick. quick yeah I found myself like doing that with the the um AR-15 stuff I was just going like super slow yeah yeah oh yeah dude I got a photo of my uh, my Instagram of like the we had the target like far back and fucking just like full just cut out a circle like that big in the middle of it those guns are just retarded like it was is that how big it was so no I'd hit this bullseye that many times that oh, it yeah, chopped yeah. out like the grouping just chopped out the whole middle of the target and Fuck. it's like I'm not a fucking marksman yeah 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 like yeah. that's how good those guns are like you get a sc- you get a sight and then yep. you fucking it's it's pretty like the, as far down range as it goes and it, you can just fucking pump it bro like Fuck. it's scary how good those guns are and that's an AR-15 and like you look at a gun that can do that much damage and you just think it would fuck you up but it's just so smooth like doo, 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 doo. just like, be like hitting a watermelon eh? or like if it like headshot oh, yeah. it's gnarly dude just but explode like no kick no like it's just so smooth it yeah, feels yeah. like it feels fake you're like, oh really the, yeah you're like how the fuck can, is when this, you shot it yeah it's just like doo, 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 doo. <laughs> it's fucking absurd like, I, I, I should just, probably do it then. Oh, bro, you have to. Yeah, yeah. It's so at least at least shoot or do something. Yeah, you got to shoot. Like they they do the package things. Like just get one of those packages, but just make sure you shoot AR fifteen. AR fifteen. They're fucking. Okay. They're the ones like it's gnarly. Like they're the ones that uh, do all the mass shootings over there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, right. But like you, oh, yeah, that's the oh, gun. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah see yeah, if okay. you see if you can see like what how much it is to shoot one of those there. But yeah, like you strip gun club what <laughs> it Dude, just gets better fucking google seos on point but that come up it just gets better all right celebrate bachelorette parties all right go let's play that video actually there's a video down the bottom <laughs> strip club this is a fucking america right now dude we're literally figuring it like, this is america uh is that it there go up one yep there it is there See, I do know my guns. You know your guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're fucking... It's ridiculous, dude. Um, so how much is that? 800 rounds per minute. Holy fuck. Oh, is that... A, if that's, like, pinned... Yeah, if you held that gun with unlimited bullets for 60 seconds, it would shoot 800 bullets. No price. Yeah, right. Go back to the, just the homepage, because they had, like, a video. I want to see the strippers. <laughs> <laughs> what's a strip club I just want to see how I want to see how they integrate yeah, the yeah, fuck, yeah. you know what I mean into a, a yeah, gun, like a gun does, club yeah how do they make this work alright let's fucking figure this shit out welcome video I feel like this is where we'd start stripper hands you your gun bullets well they do have like pretty sexy chicks working in all of them <clears> like, <throat> which makes sense right yeah Man, when we saw this is fucked up to say we saw these Muslim dudes in there when we were doing ours, it was just like our group and then these Muslim dudes and I was just like, oh fuck you, guys. <laughs> this is like a super bad. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, and, was, and like, and it was so funny because my uncle was a fucking, he's a cop. Look at that thing go, bro. Oh, you reckon it's just called Strip Gun Club because it's probably on the strip? Ah. Oh. I haven't seen any dude seen that it. was too good to be true <laughs> yeah. that's oh, I was like fuck you're kidding me there's an actual st- because Vegas is obviously famous for the strip clubs yeah 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 so I was like there's a strip club and a gun range all in one I was like this has to be fucking this can't be real and it turns out it wasn't but yeah my uncle was there he's like an old school cop dude and he, oh, okay. and he was just like on edge bro like PTSD <laughs> style like, <laughs> like he's just seen way too much shit and he was just like fucking <laughs> skits <laughs> he's just skits it out that was fucking awesome alright bro well, I'm gonna let you go yeah we fucking oh yeah no we got to that point of just degrading into uh, looking Strippers at strip clubs on YouTube <laughs> 
<laughs> I appreciate you coming on. No, glad, thanks for having me. Glad we got Sick. to do it, eh? Yeah, I know. It took a while. <laughs> yeah, but I'm glad we waited. Yeah. Cause, uh, thanks for having me. We were going to do it after SX Open at some point. Yeah. Last year, we were like, yeah, oh, we'll make it happen. And Are then, you going this year? Yeah, Are you doing yeah. like same as last yeah. year? Yeah, yeah. hopefully Sweet. better. New so, Zealand? Yes. Both. Are you going to New Zealand as well? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I'll be in New Zealand. So Let's go shoot some guns there. <laughs> <laughs> in the strippers. <laughs> no, actually, no, their fucking laws have gotten even tighter now oh, yeah? after that whole deal. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, the right. church. Shit. Yep. Yeah, shit. shit. So no guns in New Zealand. We are not shooting guns, guns in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> we are fucking not doing it. <laughs> that is not happening. We're going to go to Supercross. Um, but no, we'll hang out over there. Yeah, then. that'd be and sick. And we'll... Um, I'm going to do the podcast again in Melbourne, so if you can, yeah. come on. Yeah, I'll come, come on, on. have and a chat. Who could we... I feel like we didn't need to get someone on to roast. Like me and you could just roast someone. Grant, maybe? We roast GB. him. GB. GB's a good rant. Oh. Like a good a roaster. Because he's fucking a hot cunt. And he cunt. takes it well, too. He's a hot cunt. He's a beaver. Yeah, fuck yeah. off. You're fuck fucking off. gorgeous, all right? You can listen to me fucking rip on you because yeah, yeah. you're a hot cunt, all right? And it's not fucking I was bad. getting some wild Snapchats the other night, so oh, he's a good boy. Isn't he the man? Yeah. Um, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Nah, and thank uh, you. you've got a fucking incredible story, dude. Like appreciate the way it, this worked out. I know yeah. we kind of ended up talking fucking mad shit. No, yeah. Him, but uh, <laughs> but no, nah, you're an awesome dude. You're a guy I've got a lot of respect for, a lot of time for. Yeah, and, uh, two-way street, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Appreciate Stoke, it, bro. Thanks for having us. You. We 2020. Did yeah, done. Sweet. You. And win best whip so you can fucking drive a tank. <laughs> drive a tank. <laughs> <laughs> oh.